The podcast on Haunted Hill will contain spoilers and swearing. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. I saw this light go. Be one of us. I didn't tell you my name. Hang up. I didn't tell them my name. And welcome to the podcast on Haunted Hill, episode 138. I sound like I'm trailering an 80s action movie. My name's Kev. Trailer in an action movie? No, it'd be more like this. Episode 138 of the podcast on Haunted Hill. That would be better. I was watching Gremlins 2 yesterday. Oh, you're Dan, aren't you? Quickly. Oh, by the way, I'm Dan. I was watching Gremlins 2 yesterday because Elijah picked it out while we were playing. The new batch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd never seen it. And we watched it, and at one point, he says, what's going on? I explained to him, oh, this would be, if you're in a cinema, the film would break. And da-da. But it's Hulk Hogan, and you remind me of Hulk Hogan just then, didn't you? Hey, brother. Well, there was two versions of that, uh, wasn't there? There was the home video version, which in which the tape broke. Oh. Um, and, and they're sort of like... I've then the Gremlins, one. The Gremlins did like a hand puppet silhouette sort of thing on the screen well they do that anyway but it's it's the, crazy. Fi- uh, the film breaks not the actual yeah. is that what you're thinking but then in the cinema in the cinematic version Hulk Hogan was in it oh I saw both it's in both oh okay cool cool they, they, they did two slightly different I versions thought one for the cinema, meant, one for the video. yeah I thought because the film breaks but it would have been nice if it had actually done a tape where the tape snapped and then it showed some people with a videotape because it shows the cinema it breaks yeah. the, it goes like real meta that's right. Well, you, you saw the cinematic version then, but there's also the um, there's a, a video version as well, See, which Elijah, is cool. Elijah would have relayed that more, even though he doesn't really watch video tapes. You might have understood that more because that explains him. But yeah, you might have been Hulk Hogan. Anyway, and and you know Christopher Lee, you know why he did that that cameo in that film? His grand uh, his grandchild or something said to him, "You should do it." No, he wanted to. Um, apologise to Joe Dante for appearing in that Howling movie that he was in. Howling awful, Part 2 awful. because uh, jo- Joe Dante uh, uh, directed the first one. I've never seen the second one. It's in the European castle. Um, I had a, vid- uh, a videotape fit, but the videotape was busted. So I've never oh. seen it. Well, there we go. Well, listen, it's episode 138. Already we're rabbiting on, but that's what people are here for, the tangent, Scav. But let's <clears throat> quickly set things up. Mm-hmm. Um, this is... The, I'm ticking a big tick in my imaginary hand here. We're ticking off the start of summer. Yeah, this is summer, so I uh, hope everybody's got their, their thongs on and you're <laughs> all oiled up <laughs> and you're, wow. you're, you're lounging on a beach like a whale, just going... Bleh. If you're Australian, by the way, Gav doesn't, isn't referring to your flip-flops or your, your sandals, because in Australia, your thong is, is your shoe, is your sandal. No, no, I mean like your little uh, little bit of material uh, covering up your private area. Men, women, non-gendered, you've, you've all got these little privately areas where we have to do the stuff. Things private happen, areas. Things happen there. Only some people are allowed to see the private areas. Uh, well, legally. Um, uh, <laughs> Unless you're Kevin Spacey. <laughs> well, I mean, some people might flash to each other or something when they're drunk. I don't know. Well, um, but I mean, going? I don't know where this is going, actually. But uh, this, is, this is a bit of material that covers up that area. I hope you're, in, you're wearing it, all of you, while well, you listen to what me you're saying, Dan. What, what you're saying is you hope they're semi-naked while they listen to the summer episode. I think so, yeah. Okay, I, I try well, to imagine. You are. Do you remember there's this Jimi Hendrix uh, album cover, um, and it's just loads of naked women? Um, it, it might even be Electric yeah, Ladyland. Yeah, it's, it's four girls. No, isn't that? Um, uh, oh God! I thought it was is Electric it, is Ladyland. It, is but... it four women sat by a swimming pool? No, 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 no. It's a load oh, of women okay. just looking up at them all naked and stuff. Um, um. And um, maybe that's what I'm imagining now, but all of our listeners all together just pushed into a room all together. Kind of like a squashed human centipede without the actual arse to mouth. And and I'm imagining... Jesus. I'm imagining you... I'm imagining you wearing Borat's mankini. (laughs) And we're standing over them going, rah, 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 like weird dictators. Dictators. (laughs) Dictators. Dictators. (laughs) Half dick, potato, dick half penis. Oh, I don't know what's going on there. Um, Listen, are you all right? Enjoying the sunshine? I'm good. Uh, sunshine. It's, 
it's, let's be honest, yeah. we live in the UK. You, uh, no, don't, yeah, it's been pretty warm as well. To be it's fair, been warm, but it's raining for fair, about two weeks. I'm kind of doing a little bit better than most of the world. Uh, sorry, I'm the world, because I know you're listening. Uh, it's a bit hot in some of your countries. Yeah, I heard it was 59 degrees Celsius in China. Mm. That's that's. I mean, there is such a thing as global warming, and we're seeing it. But let's not let's not get too depressed about that. Gav's showing me his mug, um, and the reason he's showing me his mug, I'll get to now. Not my face, my actual uh, not his uh, mug. coffee mug. His, his cup full of coffee. Mm. It's because on it it has beautiful hockey mask of Mr. Jason Voorhees, and to celebrate the summer, we are. Sh- 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 we are covering for this episode, as you know, you've clicked it, mm-hmm. or you listened to the last episode and we told you, uh, we are covering Friday the 13th Part 2 yep. from 1981, yep. and Friday yep. the 13th Part 3D, don't forget the D. Motherfucking free, motherfucking D. From 1982, smash that another one the following year. Um and it's probably going to be a theme that we do whenever we tackle a Jason movie we're going to do two because we covered six many years ago for a birthday episode we covered one last summer so here's two and three so if you for following along you'll probably understand that we're going to be doing four and five next summer etc etc so yeah we are that's what we're covering so lots of lots of fun kills lots of silly characters um and one of my least favorite characters in the horror genre uh, what more than a uh, older uh, lethal weapon? Uh, lethal weapon. Lethal weapon. <laughs> do, 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 Texas do you mean, I mean, a chainsaw is a lethal weapon. But listen, Gav, I want to understand. My brain, in your head, how is your head? It put? doesn't even work. Lethal they're, weapon. They're not even the same Texas letters. Chains- normally, what's, normally, what's going on? The Sarah has what's to mean? listen to me say it. Listen to me say some fucking bizarre shit. I'll just say words, and she'd be like, "What?" Or not? That is one of the just weirdest start things. Wetting herself, like when I'll say, like, I'll be like, oh, I mean that because I'll just get the words because my mind, my, I'm not very, my brain just can't do. It. That's why I failed English and I can't do it. I just can't. The words are just confusing in my head, and um, the, um, the letters. Um, sometimes it's letters that are, are the same, but Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Lethal Weapon haven't got the same letters going on. They're completely different things. No, no. Anyway, um, more, more than Franklin, then. He, yeah, more, more than, almost as much as Franklin. Like, literally, probably on the same level. And I'm referring to, of course, Shelley in uh, Friday the 13th Part 3, which we'll, we'll get to. And, um, he, and he was uh, he was employed for the job because they saw him out on the street. wasn't even an actor. And they went, yeah, he looks perfect. Yeah, Except fucking hell. that, that annoyance. Yeah. I, will be, I will be having a bit of a go at him. His character, not that the actor, but his character when we get there. And I know he's there to be annoying. He looks, but... it looks kind of the same nowadays. You see a lot of the uh, actors from there, because obviously this movie is He just eight, doesn't eight, have the curly 80, hair. Early 80s. Yeah, it, well, he does. It's just shorter. But he looks, doesn't look that much different for early 80s. But a lot of the other cast members, you see him, you're like, whoa. <laughs> no offence to him in any way. Age, whatever. It's just kind of like, whoa. Obviously, because, yeah. you know. Of course, people grow. It's really funny when you watch. I was thinking about this earlier today when you watch a film. It's really odd that you just like you, you'll see a picture now. I saw someone who's in Chase and Amy or something like that, and I saw a picture of Kevin Smith put a picture on Instagram, and I was like, "Whoa, they look old!" And, it's like, and I said to myself, "Yeah, yeah, they've got older. Yeah, but then, like you but have then, got older. It's just what it is. But you don't it's because they're in the limelight, and you see these movies over and over and over in your head. You have what they look like, and then, but then sometimes it's just like, people oh, don't." For example, I was watching Chris Rock's newest stand-up the other day, mm. um, where he talks about the Will Smith incident, and I suddenly realised that w- Chris Rock is 58, and he looks younger than me, and he's on stage t- like telling these jokes, like, and I'm like, how is this man almost 60? What is going on? Yeah, you do find with black people a lot more because of the lines of sort of in the face so much. You don't see so much of the uh, us, us white folk, you know. Yeah, we get the wrinkles. Yeah, coming. and you can see it more, and you can see the crows feeling like stuff. You don't see it as much sort of thing, you know. Um, um, and and who's the other one? Oh, Salma Hayek. I was watching the first episode of the new season of Black Mirror. She's in it, and she is almost 60. Yeah, oh and, God, she she does not look it. She yet. does look good as well, but yeah, t- totally. People generally just do look. But people good. do. It's not a color of skin at all. People generally do look good as they get older, and it's it's life choices, isn't it, my friend? You know, smoking, if, cocaine, if, if you're drinking. In, if you're injecting heroin into your testicles on a daily basis, yeah, yes, you're, uh, not, I, you're not gonna look good in at thirty-five. I've asked you to not bring that up. I quit all that years ago. 
Okay. I remember I remember seeing a picture of oh, that God. in the woods, like some magazines, like back in the day, though, like years Whoa. ago. Bit, yeah, it was like, it, it, and it was, I don't know what it was. Um, maybe it was something to actually get you not doing it, like a like fucking this is gnarly, you know. And um, um, just yeah, that just made me go. Oh, I'm never gonna do whatever that stuff is, heroin, you know, because it was heroin. I didn't know what it was. Well, anyway. Let's get it's summer. So let's do some heroin for the summer. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's what we're covering. The two movies. We also got a special look. We're actually going to go on a little camping trip for World of the Strange. Bill Murray is already. He's already got the tent set up. Yeah, you've got you've got some camping utensils and things. Um, yeah. It just made me think of very quickly just then. Killing Zoe. Remember that movie, Killing Zoe? I do. Yeah. And yeah. it goes now we do heroin. <laughs> yes. Like, whoa, and then bum each other. Like whoa yeah. to jazz music. Okay. Well, it's just one of our this normal what Friday we, nights. what we do in the basement in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> what happens in the basement in Paris stays in the basement in Paris. Um, speaking Especially of, in American uh, Werewolf in Paris. This is a little segue into a little reason why I'm a bit tired, actually, because that reminds me of yeah, the so, of that movie. Yeah. So Gav and I, uh, we always sort of message, you know, on the day you of recording. plan it and make sure it's all good. Still and, good for tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes, good. like, not last time, the episode, obviously, we managed to record it, but we had planned it and the time before and we had to cancel because I was just too tired and sometimes get a headache yeah. and I'm too tired i just can't shift it for whatever reason i just can't do anything about it unless i get some like a nap or something um but i don't have that today i'm pretty good actually um continue but you we'd messaged as always to say still on for recording tonight here we are so obviously the answer is yes but i did say to go i'm a little tired because my kids are you know kids so that they keep me up at night at the moment but gav said i've got an interesting reason why i was up uh, well, I didn't sleep much last night, but I won't tell you till we're recording. <laughs> yeah. And I always get very excited when he says this. So well, you never Gav, know what's going to happen. Um, Gav, take it away. Uh, by the way, dear listeners, sweet listeners, in your thongs, as I'm sure that you all are, like Gav said, Gav is currently uh, sat without a shirt on. Uh, as always, I just want to so just want to give you that image. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything weird. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, well, right, take it away. Well, it wasn't the ceiling. Uh, recently, I've had like the sounds in the ceiling and stuff like that. Uh, funny oh, enough, on. you you haven't told our listeners about that. You told your listeners oh, on your other show. show. Oh, yeah, okay, thanks. For, thanks for letting me know this because yeah, I get confused. Um, uh, no, I'm not I, Sarah. This Gav. is this is an just so you know. last night. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, in the scene and above me, we just keep hearing scraping the sounds and t- tapping and stuff. And I, I said to Jay, I was like, it's, it's probably rats. Um, you know, just, there's not very much more we can do about it. Um, they can't get in here. You know, you're fine. You just have to put up with it a bit. I said, if it gets really bad, I can get hold of the landlord and we have to get someone to have a look at it. The loft hatch is just out my, uh, landing and I could get, I thought about putting up my phone actually because what else has been happening? And this isn't even what I was going to tell you. What else has been happening is that one night it was pouring with rain and I, I, I didn't have the kids over, it's just me. And I woke up and the rain was coming in the window. I was like, oh, shit. So I shut the window, but I was fast asleep. But um, just as I bang slammed it, obviously it would have been quite startling. It was quite a, quite a fud and it was very quiet. It was like three, four in the morning. Apart from the rain coming down, I heard boom, 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 like single steps above me, just above me in the loft. I don't know what that is because that couldn't be a uh, a rat. It it was boom, 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 boom. What? And it was in the ceiling, and um, that was definitely like individual steps. And I just just, I slammed it, and it boom, boom, boom. So that's a bigger animal then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, at some point, I'm have to put the loft hatch up on my phone with a flash Please and film it, it and film it and see what I can catch. Yeah. Well, the other day there was a really bad smell, like death outside. And I landed. I messaged my uh, neighbour, but he wasn't there. Um, but the smell's gone. He didn't mention it again. I spoke to him earlier about what happened last night. We spoke about. Well, anyway, wow, you've really set us a scene here. Um, um, well, uh, what uh, happened last night? Well, it was a summer holiday, so uh, Elijah and I were up. It's a bit late. It's a bit late. I, he went to bed at midnight. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Well, sometimes we just... It's all right. We won't, we won't tell his mother. It's fine. It's, it wouldn't be a problem. Um, <laughs> it's the summer holidays. He, he gets in, It's not like I'm depriving him of sleep. He's not getting up early. He's like chilling in the mornings, you know. He's excited. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's cool. But he couldn't sleep, and that's why he's still up. I was like, oh, do you want to just draw then? So draw. But while we were doing that, because the shops downstairs has been converted to bigger, so while we were doing that, just lying in bed would have been, he was just drawing, just a few feet below me, there was a professional hit going on. (laughs) 
Excuse me? Uh, not like a killing, but there's a professional robbery going on in a shop below me with four men and one guy in a car outside uh, doing a professional hit. Uh, and they, take, they took all the tobacco and one bottle of vodka because I've been in the shop today to chat to the uh, main guy. And they went to the safe in the post office and they tried to take it out. And they were all very calm, apparently. And apparently one of the shop guys sort of saw them through the window and they clocked eyes. And he just kind of looked to his other mate and went, come on, we've got to get moving. So the like shop guy, was open, like they guy. went in. No, 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 the shop was shut. This was like midnight. So they were doing it, and I didn't have no idea. The shop is so close to me. My windows were open. I, I can hear everything. Didn't hear everything. Hmm. And they went in there, and they were below uh, raiding the shop. Um, and they and, took all the tobacco products. Yeah, vodka. You couldn't get the, the, the uh, safe out, apparently. Um, but they were like, they checked the furniture and stuff, and they were like professional... It's like a Guy Ritchie thing, you know, Guy Ritchie movie. Was one of them Jason Statham? I don't know. I don't know. I but it, was, it, was. It, was, it was very professional, apparently. And um, then, so then two cops turned up. No, because I'm just drifting mm. off. Daisy walks in and says, there's an alarm going off. The shop alarm goes off quite regularly, but it's not as hard as it was. It was like, really like, what the fuck? So I was like, just shut your windows. I shut the bathroom window and I tried to get to sleep. And then cop car comes up. And then another cop car comes up. And I was like, for God's sake. And uh, then at three o'clock to, uh, no, it's 3.30, the locksmith was there drilling and cutting the door yeah. at half three this morning. I was just like, this is just ridiculous. And just, yeah. But I didn't know, just, just below me, there was a professional robbery going on. Amazing. Yeah. So that's why I didn't get much sleep because. So, uh, have you got some cheap cigarettes for me? No, no, no. But uh, funny enough, though, I'm, I love being a bit detective. So I was in there asking loads of questions. So, so okay. So what? So is that people? And was one outside. Being Columbo. Was, I said, did they use glass cut or what was it? It's a crossbow. Crossbow was it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course it was. I was watching Columbo before we got on air. <laughs> but, oh, just one more thing. Uh, yeah. It was. Uh, yeah. I'll go with that. My little rain mat and nothing on underneath. It's my favourite detective show of all time. Naked Columbo. Um, what? But yeah, so um, <laughs> that's not your favourite show. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what was going on last night. Weird one, really. Um, you know, don't normally have like robberies going on just below me. Obviously. <laughs> no. But no. you did also have a secret bedroom, so it's a lot of weird stuff that's happened. Yeah, I've got to say, since I've moved in here, consider it's like the what well, it is all it's just always the quiet ones, and it? it's only a thousand people. It is super quiet and stuff here. It's a very quiet village. Yeah. Since I've been here, there is the weirder sort of things you sort of notice. Like, okay, all right, you know. Yeah. Well, anyway. I've got nothing. I've got nothing to report uh, no. that interesting, really. Um, I have been watching some films though. Um, mm-hmm. uh, one I want to talk about a bit. The others I'll briefly mention. Um, I've been catching up on some older stuff um, and also been having a look at what's on Netflix. Netflix just accept any old shit on there, don't they? Netflix is... Yeah. I don't know. So, um, okay, Netflix to... is still good, but when you go on there, you do find like, some crazily good movies, but it's like, yeah, I know that movie I've seen a million times. I... You know. Well, uh, I'll talk about a couple of movies I've watched, then I'll talk about the Netflix one. So I watched um, Dogs from 1977 uh, with David McCallum, which I'd never seen before. I don't know what it is. Uh, it's just about um, dogs that decide we're going to start killing everybody. Pretty good. Nice. One, one of those sort of nature fights back movies. I, uh, uh, yeah, I'll have to check it out with Sarah. We like, yeah, our, I think we like it, our 70s I think, movies. I think it was on YouTube, actually. Um, I also checked out a couple of movies on Netflix and you can tell from the names of these how bad they're going to be um, and the poster the first one is called The Last House on Cemetery Lane I, I like the name myself but it it was set in Wales yeah, and it's just the most no, it's just the most boring it's about a writer a horror writer that goes to a mansion to sit there and write a horror novel Oh, Nothing happens. Good. Nothing happens. He meets a girl, has sex with her, finds out she's a ghost. That's the end. Oh, I feel like I've seen this movie. It's, it's not really that bad. old. 90s? It's uh, 2015. Oh. All right. Feels I, like I I've seen it. But... Wouldn't recommend it to any. Wouldn't recommend it to my worst enemy. Uh, uh, Sarah and I took a trip to New York, and uh, uh, without Al Pacino. Hey, hoo-ha! 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 
I'm Al Pacino. <laughs> I'm gonna get it down in the S and M gay scene. That's basically wow. it. Doesn't even sound like Al Pacino. Then we watched Cruising. Oh right, okay. So yeah, I saw that you were watching this. I quite, I, I quite enjoyed it. I thought it was right. It was. Um, is it? Uh, is it a gay soft porn? No, it's not, it's not, no, no, it is. There's people who are gay, uh, nude, and there's like sex scenes, but any sex scene is just that it happened to be gay, but it's not really porn, you know. So, no, it said soft porn. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, but even if you have sex scenes in a movie, you don't class it soft porn. So, do you know what I mean? Well, no, I mean, with you, a name like Cruising. That, well, it's because of the whole like no, uh, notion of it and stuff, and it's was based in the S&M clubs and it is quite dark in a way not obviously the sexualness of it um, it would have been for some people if you're a very straight age than that this is like um, the, and these were clubs of actual the actual people were in them clubs it wasn't like actors they were there and Al Pacino was apparently scared most of the time he was like had fear <laughs> most of the idiot. time it's supposed to be uh, Richard Gere that's that was William oh. Freakin's uh, it's William Freakin from Nexus you know um, it was um, that's a, that could be a little segue for you in a moment actually a trader for the it new could one. Be, I've yeah. not seen it um, um, but yeah it was it was I quite enjoyed it um, Al Pacino has to it's based on a true event what happened and a cop went undercover in the S and M gay scene okay 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 here we go okay I'm going in okay. oil me up but come in. on here I'm we go going in. Oh, I'm not in. I'm not in. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, uh, ooh, uh. Guys, I wonder the safe word. In it. The safe word is ooh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> And um, uh, yeah, it's based on a true event that happened. And, and apparently, the guy who actually did it, the cop, actually came out and said, "I questioned my sexuality." You know, because you get so deep. It's it's the same thing. I watched. Like, Deep cover recently with Jeff Goldblum and uh, um, Larry Fishburne. Great movie. Great, Great movie. And if, if people haven't seen it, you should check it out as well. It was directed by um, Fingerjiggy from Predator. Um, uh, cuts himself with a razor. Fingerjig. Bill Duke. Um, anyway, regardless of that, um, yeah, it's quite good. Um, I thought it was. Um, I've never actually seen it. Um, I think it's worth watching, actually. Like, it is, it's, yeah, it's all right, because there is a guy going around killing people. Um, uh, he's basically getting... It's a serial killer, so it's it's got horror. We could we could cover it for the podcast, you know. Um, mm. It's um, a gay guy going around. Um, well, it's, they're all gay guys. I'm sort of saying gay guy. There's a guy picking up, um, uh, going around, the killer is a guy put, flaunting, flaunting himself out in the streets in New York and so in parks and things like that, as, a, as <clears throat> people were doing then. They were supposedly frequenting that yeah. easily. Like, Cruising. Oh, you know. Yeah, and you'd have a hanky for different things, like a, a yeah, yeah. hanky on the left, I want a blowjob, hanky on the right, I'll give a blowjob job yep. yeah a red one bottom sex i would give them away etc etc and it was all like i was just like just, i said to sarah with, with men just jizz and everything you, 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 a man you could jizz 20 minutes later you're ready to go again do you know what i mean it's just because yeah. men are like that it's just the way they are i was just like blimey must be like just the slipperiest floor ever in these places <laughs> do you know what i mean jesus but anyway, it's a pretty good film, and he's going around just picking up other guys, uh, this killer is, and then um, killing him, you know. Um, so Al Pacino goes in undercover to try and p- get this guy to pick him up, and he has to then, it's really hard, he has to go straight undercover while he's got a girlfriend, and trying to keep that normal normality, but he's in the gay world undercover, so he's, he's getting into the lifestyle of it and everything, and it's so Al- interesting. Al Pacino played a gay guy before, didn't he? Uh, in, um, name, wasn't it? Yeah, a great movie. I've not seen um, that, It's really great, and he robs a bank, and the reason yeah, he robs the, a bank is to get the change? money to... Yeah, exactly, yeah. For his partner. Yeah, it's a great movie. Uh, very, very tense. Yeah. Um, so he's no stranger to, to that kind of thing. Um, well, yeah, sounds, sounds good, and it's... Pretty nice. good, yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll add it to my list then. Uh, I do like Pacino, old Pacino especially. I think, as in, as I think, in younger. Pacino, I think I mean. though, like if you're a totally strange, like if if I said to my mum here, because I've been give my mum and dad, I curate films for my collection and lend them to them, and like they were literally on the phone to my mum yesterday. She said, "I watched one of your movies." And I like, what one was it? Tells me what she watch. Oh, it's The Calling with Susan Sheridan. But I knew she, when I watched it, I knew she'd like it, so I curate them. But if I was just to throw a, not a Serbian film or something, but if I was to throw a fucking uh, cruising, 
my mum's fairly straight ahead, she would just be like, oh, that's all, oh, you know, because all these dudes with thongs, in the, the, as the camera pans along, and there's dudes giving head and stuff, so you're not seeing actually the yeah. big dick, but you know what's going on. Um, oh, I know. So I think if someone, for like my mum or something, she'd be like, oh, but for you, you well, my, my My dad can't even watch sex scenes. He, he gets a bit... He gets cross when there's a sex scene in a film. <laughs> Lend him cruising. Tell him it's. Tell him it's. Oh, God. I doubt tell him it's something TV. else. Tell him it's something Honestly, else. Yeah. Honestly, tell him it's about cruising down the coast in your car. <laughs> just say, just watch this. It's a lovely movie called Cruising. Sunday afternoon. Get your roast dinner ready. Get your slippers on, and you know. Right, William Freakin. I'm going to use that connection. Yeah, I'm just going to jump over to um, probably his most famous movie that he directed was obviously which is the almost closing movie of fright fest this year i was just a bit like uh okay so freaking directed the original exorcist from the 70s 73 um and david gordon green we know that man because he recently rebooted the halloween franchise yeah to uh a somewhat i would say so a, a mixed mix, a mixed bag of uh, I, I emotions wouldn't say, i wouldn't say that i would say there was a pretty sh- sure I, i've only seen the first two the second one is one of the f- worst things i've ever seen i haven't seen halloween ends yet. yeah i will watch definitely it definitely could be a, a group of a, a, y- a lot younger than us demographic of which love those course, movies absolutely love them because it, it's it, uh, uh, it, you know it feeds to them you know the thing is <clears throat> I always say, you know, I go into everything with an open mind, 100%. So th- what I'm talking about, guys, I'll cut to the chase, is The Exorcist. Um, it's called uh, The Exorcist Believer. And this is a, a sort of a sequel of sorts to the very original Exorcist, directed by David Gordon Green, written by as well. Uh, and what they've done very cleverly is they've also got in um, Ellen Burstein, who plays Reagan's mother, um she's back as you know obviously chris mcneil old now obviously uh and it's about two girls this time who go into the woods and they disappear for three days and when they find them dun, 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 they're possessed um but i watched the trailer and i thought this looks quite good there's a good use of the theme music um i'll give it a go i'm not a massive fan of Nexus. I, f- I think it's quite overrated but i understand at the time of release it would have been fucking shocking for people Oh yeah, a young girl that. masturbating with a crucifix would have just tickled people the wrong that, way. That throwing up and all that, all the business, all yeah. of it, really. But, it's but still, personally, you know, uh, I'm not really into the film. It's, it's one of it still still gets under my skin every, with every watch. Exorcism's not my uh, subgenre of horror. I'd jump to. Yeah, fair enough. But um, anyway, I wanted. I would say watch this trailer if you want, or don't, and just go watch it because it looks like it could be quite good. Um, but then I thought that about, and I did enjoy the very first Halloween by David Gordon Green. Um, you yeah, know, I, I saw it with you in the you cinema. And I did come out of that going. Uh, we reminisced, and we we're like, you know, had the music, the car, pumpkin at the beginning, the same color fonts. It was all very much, and we we enjoyed that experience. But it's the same for almost like the Marvel films when it's just like we're going to make five hundred. It's just like when it's it, it's the same with John Wick. It's just it kind of takes the magic away a little bit. I was just like, oh, can they just have that one Halloween with James Curtin? That that bit, you know, not a trilogy, not like going to something but the third one. So yeah, different. I hope that this is a one-off. So different. It was just um, like. And also, I still don't know why you'd put your hot dog in your popcorn or, uh, when we were in there. Well, but, I was trying something. Yeah, I don't know. And then they had all that relish co- was coming out the end of it. The trouble is, though, now I was eating a hot dog with popcorn kernels icon. It's weird. Weird. Um, well, I had a hot dog in the cinema just a few days ago when I watched Indiana Jones. There we go. Oh, so you've seen it. Yeah, I did enjoy it, but it could have been a lot bloody shorter. There's a lot of bits in there as just a bit like oh, you know we can talk about it now then yeah well, we can't spoil it. It. sarah didn't really enjoy it um the opening I, did. 20 minutes. I, I, I don't mind see i'm uh, contrary to on uh, the striking that's going on at the moment i don't mind the aging stuff i would happily watch movies from back in the day with new people's faces put on them and stuff it, i know sarah's well. just like no no not at all and i was just like if it's done well i'm not bothered i i just want to see stuff sometimes 
I enjoyed uh, the beginning. I really quite enjoyed the whole train thing. Straight in yeah, there. Me too. Uh, um, I quite enjoyed it. But yeah, it, it felt, it was, felt like um, Last Crusade, that kind of like. It, it was quite late nice. 80s. I, and I didn't mind the aging. I thought it was okay. It was a, do, you, do you see what I mean about them capturing, recapturing that Spielberg, Lucasfilm? Yeah. Gut, that's something about it. Or, just or, felt, almost, I think almost. I don't think totally. Because uh, funny enough, I didn't even think it was John Williams, and it was. And I was a bit like, oh, okay. I thought maybe someone else don't know. I thought that can't be true. I didn't look into it, and it was John Williams. Yeah. I think it's just getting older. To be honest, um, like Harrison Ford de-aged, but it was still his voice now, and I knew that straight away. It's like, oh, okay, cool. That's a shame. But again, the way um, uh, this is no spoiler, but when he does speak, he sounds older. But the way they get around that is he's usually being either choked or got a sack on his head. Yeah, for that. Uh, it's only so they be, may it's only be someone work. like me who is like got some weird. Well, mind I said thing to with uh, I said to um, so. R. J. McCready the second that. Uh, he spoke, I went, oh, oh God, he's still got his 78-year-old voice. Yeah. Because it was this very young man. Yeah. And he's like... Rrr, 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 rrr. Yeah, okay, so it wasn't just me, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, we, um, we all noticed it. But, um, it I did enjoy it, it but, um, yeah, it, it, at times, it's like, you know. It I wasn't love the, the ending. The, it, wasn't the, it wasn't a great that story. It wasn't like... The way they used to do it is so much more like they were trying to do the whole... The map goes across, and we've got to go on this adventure now, Indy. And we, uh, uh, but it wasn't... It didn't have it, do you know what I mean? Like the uh, last ones. The the thing that they were trying to get was such a like more important thing. It didn't seem as important even though it was. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't like the main focus or... I don't know. It just didn't seem totally right for me. But then you could say that was, about all of them. Okay. Because at the end of the day, in, in the Temple of Doom, he's trying to get three rocks. He's trying to get three rocks back to a village. Mm. So, you know, but the main thing is, yeah, you but enjoy they, they, it. There, they there's no fine. point in, there's, there, is, there is a point in breaking films down um, when you're reviewing them or whatever, but there's no point in breaking them down when you just go no, into no, the no. cinema and you're watching a film. I'm only breaking down for you now. I haven't yeah, yeah, no, totally, stuff totally. Uh, all, I, all I'm saying is you were entertained, which is good. No, I didn't mind. Uh, like, honestly, um, there was bits where I was just going, oh, come on, like uh, at times. That's it. That's my only complaint, really. Fair it enough, could have been, I, I had a lot of 22, 23 minutes snipped off it or something. Yeah, that's me. I, I've I've got a little bit more patience than you, which is why I watch things yeah. like no Shark Killer. Yeah, and that's why I think I'm ADHD. <laughs> because so <laughs> and Shark Killer sounded amazing, and I sh- I was with Sarah, and you sent it to me, or you were put it on I uh, Facebook or whatever, and I look what Dan's watching. <laughs> So the curse of Count Dracula lives on in a shark-infested waters, claiming the lives of a tourist community. A sea hunt for the new species results in monsters, madness, and bloodshed. This great white is putting the bike back into terror, and it has the help. It has help with the aid of new vampires intent on seeing it survive. Gav, I watched this. I sat down, as you know. It's from uh, 2020. Uh, Two, I think, or twenty-one. Was it alcohol or anything which can intoxicate your mind? So uh, it wasn't no, straight. I don't. I might have been having. I might have had a glass of red wine, and that was it. Okay. Uh, this was. Yeah. Uh, I'd probably say, and you know, I watch a lot of shark films. Yeah. The worst one I've ever seen. Wow, you're like a shark spurt. I am like a shark spurt. This was so bad. The acting was so bad. Mm. The story was so bad. The special effects were so, was a, was you, a man's hand in a shark puppet. Could you? I'm not joking. Could it you was a t- man's could, hand in a shark's puppet. Could you tell with the camera, the camera quality, like sort of what camera it was? Like a bad camera? Could you? You know? No, it was a good camera. Yeah, this is the thing. I think it's really somebody fresh- bought a decent camera. No, no, they didn't buy it for that. But they, not, they but they're not hired. There's a good production actors. company probably already, or they hire them out to people, and they're like, "Oh, that's on the side. We can churn out these films." There was one woman in it, right? So the acting was so bad in it, really bad. There was a guy in Renfield character, and he was like, "Well, welcome to the hotel," and he was clearly reading his lines just off camera. But then, all of a sudden, there was this one woman in it. It was an incredible... And like, she probably wasn't an, inc- an incredible actor, but because she was an actual actor, every time she was on screen, I was like, she's amazing. What's she doing in this? She was delivering these lines with such like intensity. But that actually, in that movie... Anybody I could have done a better job. Shined. Yeah, exactly. Because everybody else wasn't shining. Look, if you're a shark enth- movie enthusiast like me, you probably already have seen Shark Killer, but 
I honestly can't recommend a they're, single thing they're about it. Basically, just like Sean Connery and Friday Thirteenth. Good segue there. Um, just coming up with uh, a name and a picture, and then going from there. Yeah, because I've seen them all. I've seen Sharkenstein. I've seen. I've seen um, Shark Exorcist. You know, I've, I've seen, seen Shark sh- Exorcist. I've seen all the shark verses. It was, it was, seen- I thought it was first. Awful. I've seen Santa Jules. Um, you know, I've watched all of these, a lot of these, most of these shark movies. Um, I even watched one with Burt Reynolds recently. But the, um, the one that you watch, it's, it's just one of those things for just nowadays, because mm. it's that easy to make a film and get out distributed. Anyone could do it. Anybody listening right now, you can you can make a film, get it distributed, <clears> and it's online or somewhere. And because of that reason, unfortunately, it's a bit like, oh. and it's just so frustrating that people just do that. Though. It's just like, can't you just like really put like your F in to make a good movie? There's someone that we actually know, Dan, we won't say names, it's a director, and um, they, they, I think last year, did, directed seven feature films. Mm. Okay. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. what are you doing? Like, don't do that. Like, try and just do one, maybe. <laughs> even yeah. one, even one feature more film in a it. year is impressive. Yeah. You, you know, know, I'm still making a short film. It's fucking when did we shoot that april i started prepping april. in january and it's eight and a half minutes long but uh it's coming together nicely we haven't got yeah, any updates I'll, on yeah, that yeah i can give you uh, i can give you an update i've finished writing all the music um uh, music sounds good um quite happy with that um got a kind of synth synth type thing with it um yeah it works um i'm now mixed all the songs down it's a very tedious job but i've done that so like five songs we we will anyone that did fund it who's listening we will be sending you um the score which is always nice to do nice. that because we can always we don't have to do it before the film but we can send that out which is quite a nice thing to do you know and it's good when you just get the score because you can really listen to that because obviously when it comes into film there's a lot of dialogue over the top and sometimes you don't really hear much of the score because it's taken out by sound design um done that um so um uh, yeah, just mix the songs down. I'll place them back in the edit. Then next week, I I change to colouring, and I should have it coloured by the end of next week, hopefully, because I've got not much work at the moment, so I'm kind of sitting around a bit more. Um, yeah, um, it's a shame. So you're on track. You're on track. Then you said you hoped to August. So yeah, yeah, yeah uh, pretty much. I reckon mm-hmm. I've just got to find a couple of days, get into my friend's studio, Manny Studio, to uh, do the sound mix, and then we're done. Uh, D- John's got to send me um, uh, some effect shots, um, some special effect shots. Um, and I came up with an idea of something the other day. Um, so I threw that at them. So I don't know where we are with that. So I didn't discuss it any further. But it was another special effect I wanted on added on. So uh, yeah. Cool, but yeah, we get there. Well, there we go. Well, we—that's a good little intro. We've caught up on everything, whether it's whatever is living above Gav's roof, to whatever is being stolen from below Gav's flat, uh, all the way through to movies we've watched, whether they're sharks, trailers for the new Exorcist movie, and Al Pacino cruising around in gay bars. Um, Oh, I like leather. That was a terrible opportunity. I know, that's the thing. It's, we can only it's hard to catch it, isn't it? It's hard oh, to catch it. Oh, hello. Hi, hi. Okay. 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 Well, listen. Because I'm um, always, gonna... always got going to uh, say hello to my say hello to my little friend. For some reason, I always thought goes all, sort of almost Chinese, like English. Well, to there's two Al Pacinos, why. isn't there? There was the young Al Pacino, who was a bit more like very Italian. Yeah, yeah. And then there's the new, old, the old Opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, just like um, Michael Caine, when he, you know, the young Michael Caine is very sort of like, hello. Hello. Whereas old Michael Caine is very like, Master Wayne. Master Wayne. Uh, it, gets, it gets more no- nasally, I'll, I think. I'll, I'll, I'll buried enough. I've buried hello. enough Wayne's Master Wayne. Hello. <laughs> Helen, get off your knickers. Show us your pants, Helen. Now, before we go to Camp Crystal Lake, Friday the 13th, Part 2, we are going to, because Part 3 is 3D, I thought what we'd very quickly do before we go to trailer is very quickly just talk about the phenomena that is 3D movies. Three-dimensional. Funny enough, the other day, I was like, so what's 2D? And I was like, uh, I said, I think it's just just to what we've seen. And he's like, what's 1D? I went, oh. And I was like, presumably, it's just sound. And it is. That is the first dimension. 
There we go. The first dimension is sound. The second dimension well, is visuals. The third dimension is coming in your head. The and Twilight Zone. They did start promoting like 4D at one point, and it was, uh, I think, um, like possibly other things going on as well. Yeah, you and I sat through that fucking terrible Ghostbusters film in a 4D cinema with the seats that were vibrating and moving around. Like, I that's the first and I, only time I've ever done that. I messaged you the other day. I was like, what Ghostbusters? Facebook says we watched a Ghostbusters movie. What Ghostbusters movie? That new one didn't come out. And I was so confused. You're like, it's one of the ladies, like the reboot one. I was like, oh. I've totally forgotten any of that whole experience. So... I'm glad I paid extra. I might watch it again at some point, but yeah. Afterlife is much, much better. Yeah, they're making, uh, a, they're making another one at the moment. Um, yeah, it's almost, it's almost about halfway through. Yeah, shoot, very shooting, excited about it. shooting fairly local. Yeah. It's called, um, well, it's called Ghostbusters Firehouse, but I don't know if that's going to be the final but, title. But this kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier. Can't we just made up one Halloween? Did you have to make more? And now it's like, this Ghostbusters, is it, is it going to be... We had that whole, like, oh, my God, I've had a tear at the last Ghostbusters at the end. But... Um, I know. I've told you. Today we're talking about two and three of a franchise that goes on for about eleven, eh? eleven things. So these things have to run their course. You know, who would have thought there were going to be eleven Fast and Furious movies? They, they did not think that. Cinematic genius critters. that is Vin Diesel. You know, oh, Children of critters. the Corn. Jesus, a Hellraiser. New, Children of the Corn. A new one came out last year. I think it was. We've just recently battled our way through about six or seven Leprechaun films. It's not like. The first Children of the Corn was a groundbreaking horror movie or something. It wasn't it? even that good, was it? No. no, it's not. It's kind of like you. It, it might might be on TV late at night if you, you know, have TV or don't have TV, uh, and you'd go, oh, "I might sit and watch." It. Might sit and watch this. That's it. How is there so many sequels? It's not, somebody out there is watching them though. That's the thing. Maybe one person's just buying all the copies over and over and over and funding them. Well, let's talk very quickly about 3D films. Maybe I could do some sort of scam where I fund my own film and I'm the only person that rents it, but I somehow do it enough times where I actually end up making a little, like a couple of quid here and there. It's <laughs> a lot of effort. It is. But I get to make films. 3D. Believe it or not, the first time 3D films were really around, there was a 3D craze in the 50s. Hmm. Is that, I um, guess kind of sort of because um, obviously got Fimijigi sort of tapped into that with his uh, uh, The Tingler and all these uh, House on Haunted Hill and just doing a bit more of like things like shocks in the seat and stuff like that yeah I mean House of Wax was a 3D film I went to London Dungeon last week and uh, uh, they're like people who were dressed in uh, 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 you know uh, period piece costumes going through different settings at one point they talk about uh, as a rat running around and underneath my seat there's uh, this little thing that'd be the rat running around and uh, touching, touching your bum sort of, whoa and then Sweeney well, Todd's they're talking about Sweeney Todd's and they have like a hair thing going on the back of your head like to cut your hair all of a sudden come out from the chair stuff like that. oh nice yeah I did a thing like that in New York where it was like you were sat in a cinema and the Avengers were fighting uh, and then like, well, at one point like loads of water gets sprayed and you get sprayed in the face and then the Hulk comes in the room and like as he's stomping in the room your seat's going up and down and then yeah something whip Dr. Octopus's tentacles whip out and something whips the back of your ankles under the chair and it really Brilliant. made me jump yeah, it's so it. good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah so uh, thir- the original 13 Ghosts was also uh, 3D the House on Haunted Hill uh, they did all these in 3D yeah, it so, came so, and went it, yeah so that know. with the Tingler as well because he's definitely doing it what's his name uh, but I want to say Roy Castle and it's definitely not Roy Castle uh, William Castle William Castle thank you um, and, and Creature uh, the Creature from the Black Lagoon sequel um, Revenge of the Creature was also uh, 3D oh, but no one really you know, bothered with it too much, and it went away for thirty odd years until Friday the 30th Part Two. Until the eighties, when we had a bunch of eighties movies um, but come up. Apparently, Friday the 30th Part Two was the first to do it. Uh, well, mm, I the first believe horror. this. Uh, okay, they said they so, were the first to do it, and I was thinking. Uh, well, there was you? a western in nineteen eighty one called Coming at Ya. Shit, horses uh, jumping at ya. Yeah, uh, about a bank robber res- rescuing his wife from kidnappers. Then there was a movie called Parasite with Demi Moore. It was her first film in 1982, which was 3D. And then Friday the 13th Part 3. Then Amityville 3D, the same uh, well, the next year. And the same year, 1983, was also Jules 3D. 
<laughs> it's funny that Friday the 13th have jumped on it because uh, watching the making of it, I did that whole uh, Crystal Lake memories, uh, memoirs or something like that. Uh, and they talked about it and they were like what can we do because they, they wanted they didn't want to do the same thing instead of like trying to do something different a story or whatever it's like that's what gimmick could we sort of bring it let's, let's go 3D and it was they weren't trying to do it just for a gimmick to make money they really wanted to make it like a, a scary thing they were like had a bit of passion to use 3D and they got this like a little uh, a box they just chucked onto any lens you could put it on it's like almost adaptive to any lens so they could just and it's quite lightweight, apparently. So yeah, you know, fair play to them. And they were, they had to film it in much better with much better quality because if you watch Halloween, um, no one else, oh, bloody hell, Friday the Thirteenth <laughs> Two and then Three, which I did back to back, you know, night Three's and then the not following good. night. Three's quality is bright, is lighter, it's brighter, it's crisper. Yeah, I've got the Blu-ray box set, so like uh, part one and part two, I loved it. I said, because yeah, Sarah watched two of them, she's not a fan of them, and I said to her, like, check out the quality, she said, oh, that's really good, and I was like, yeah, it's lovely. But the third one came on, not as good, and I'd say that's the adaptive 3D Okay, because it looked crisper to me and brighter, and no, sort of bit, not, bit, well, no, the, what, the lighting was good. No, I didn't think so. Well, after Jules 3, which we've covered, Jules 3D. Which I remember watching that as a kid because the TV Times gave out uh, uh, 3D glasses and it was a big thing. Everybody in England would get dirt. This is before the internet, you know, people. It came on the It was um, like Saturday TV. night, was like we were watching Jules 3 3D. Here's the glasses in your TV Times. It was like a nation thing. Not that you knew if your mates were doing it, unless they came around to do it with you, which we did it, have. But I couldn't do it. I was watching the movie and I had to get, run away. Um, I, was, I was too scared. You could uh, also get... They did a promotion with Kellogg's as well. I think certain cornflakes, you could get them in as well because... Oh, maybe that was it, not the TV a lot, Times. No, it was the TV Times because a lot of households had more than one person, obviously. So yeah. I remember we, we needed, like... We had, like, two or three pairs. But I remember watching it and I was just... I just didn't, it just didn't really work. I was too scared. Um, now, yeah, now, so, now I watch Jaws 3 and, like, what the hell is this shit? <laughs> after Jaws 3, there was couple of um science fiction films there was metal storm the destruction of jared sin fuck which is, is a, that which is a charles band movie so you oh, know okay. yeah, yeah, then, yeah. then there's a, a brilliant movie which i funny enough watched the other night with molly ringwald called space hunter adventures in the forbidden zone which is a really good um was the forbidden zone sexy it's kind of like in, if indiana jones was set on another planet slightly with a bit of um buck rogers thrown in it's just really good stuff. Got a lot of stuff like Starship Troopers and a few bits in it. It's also got Ernie Hudson in it. Nice. It's really good. Really good. Uh, that was 3D. Then there was um, Treasure of the Four Crowns, which is like an Indiana Jones ripoff. And the final 3D movie of the 80s was Jesus. Star Chaser, The Legend of Orin in 1985. It's so funny because you... It's a Star Wars ripoff. Uh, people of our sort of age are generally going to go like, "Oh, I remember the 3D movies," and you think there's loads of them, but really, when it comes down to of of major films, really, when it comes down to them, the only major film really was Jaws 3D. Um, yeah, Amityville certainly didn't take. No, off. no, not really. Amityville was uh, known good quality uh, uh, property, same as Friday the 13th, but not uh, on the scale of Jaws, which Spielberg obviously. So that's really weird. Yeah. Well, then we saw then we saw um, 3D it, tr start making a comeback with, but it wasn't proper 3D. That was with IMAX. Uh, okay. uh, but they tried to sell it as sort of 3D, like the Polar but, Express and things like that. But then they, then they went all balls out the world of technology, didn't they? And it's like fucking 3D this, 3D that. Every movie that came out was 3D. Well, My bloody Valentine, I saw that. I went 3D. to watch. Um, I see the first I one. Think I think the Friday Thirteenth remake might have even been in 3D. The first one I saw was um, Avatar, the, the original, and that blew me away because that yeah, felt sure. like I was actually in the film. That was crazy. And I also saw Gravity with um, Sandra Bullock in 3D. And again, that was filmed for that specifically. It just felt like I was in space with well, her. Only in last movie. summer I watched Jaws, the original, in 3D with all my kids, and it's fucking brilliant. Really? Oh, it's fucking amazing. Like, if you can watch Jaws in 3D, you need to watch it. You're in the water. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, they went through a phase then of making a lot of films that weren't really in 3D, but then they converted them to 3D. And again, it's kind of gone off a little bit now. We don't really get... That's what there I said. Was, people that... were buying 3D TVs for a while. Now, that, now what? 
Yeah, um, Ben, Ben DP for direct, uh, Deadbolt Films, he he uh, has 3D TV because he has Predator in 3D. And I was like, oh, dude. And he's like, he said, Predator looks amazing in 3D. You've got to come around. I was like, fucking hell. So he's going to get a couple more glasses. Me and Sarah are going to go around. We're going to have a 3D date and watch Predator. Nice. But yeah, he, he, he's he got TV. And I, um, I keep coming across these Blu-rays which are in 3D. Um, bits and bobs here and there. But yeah, it's like you can pick up the, a Blu-ray 3D player for second hand for about 30 quid now. But TV's not so much, and they've only got a lifespan of so long, I think. I don't know what it is. And thing is, though, once they're gone, you're not going to get one. It's probably no. quite hard to get one now, actually. It, it's a fad. It came and went, and it's in a very interesting part of cinema. It, it was around for like a good two, three years, but it, they were almost touting it out, though, because it was so much for everything's 3D, 3D. Almost touted out, it was like, this is it from now on. You yeah. need to be. You need to be three D. It's like it's like it's the internet or it's Blu Ray or whatever. You need to be three D. We're not going anywhere. Yep, you've gone somewhere. Yeah, I did remember watching Godzilla, the one that they made of Godzilla, like two thousand seventeen, two thousand eighteen, I don't know. Really. And I went into the chairs and did the whole movement thing, and I watched it in three D by myself. And when there's helicopters getting attacked, that's brilliant. You know. Yeah. Well, I think it's interesting that it lends itself more to horror. Like in the fifties, you had all the, the William Castle, yeah, uh, you know, and that and stuff. And then scared, I guess more. Well, exactly, because if you're, you know, if you're already on the edge of your seat, as it were, surely, and then, and then something's jumping right in your face as well. Yeah. Surely, if you took a master, like a real master filmmaker, and says, "Do us a really good three D horror movie," if you really were like, you know in the writing stage in the script stage and in the idea stage go through all work out all the things go with funny, 3d this would be incredible how do we work funny this? you should say this that'd be funny amazing you should say this because i i was, I was thinking about this, like computer enough. games actually and there's two directors i can think of that would do a bloody good job of a good 3d film mm. the first one is um peter jackson yeah I think he could do it with the Lord of the Rings to stuff that Brain he's done. Dead in 3D. <laughs> but I think, do you know who I think would be the best? Yeah. And you'll know why when I say who, who, who because think of his mo- first couple of movies, Sam Raimi. Imagine if he did. Yeah, they're both people. Dead style camera work. Uh, 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 or, also, no, yeah, I was going to say also possibly Robert Rodriguez. But only because of a technical standpoint. But actually, you're right with the camera angles. Uh, Raimi would be better at that. Because uh, it jumps Jackson. in your face as it is with Raimi. Yeah, that's what I think. Raimi, but the way it jumps in your face yeah, and yeah. everything. And he does know he does know suspense and scary stuff as well. He has done other bits. Of imagine books. if um, imagine if you watched the very first Evil Dead or even Evil Dead Two, when that scene where the 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 stag's head comes alive and everything's zo- zooming up to the camera and laughing and moving around and Ash is losing it. But imagine that in three. 3D, yeah, that would be so awesome. Yeah. But, um, I had the choice. Uh, I know we're doing Friday Fifth Part Two first of all, and we're just getting this out of the way. But I did have the choice. I didn't realise on my Blu-ray to play the 2D or the 3D. And as you know, because we we did it, well, we did a bit of it. I've got it on videotape Friday Fifth Part Three, and I've got glasses. So we tried it, but gave us headaches. Oh, um, we got about 20 minutes into it, didn't it's we? It just hurt. But I didn't realise that I've got a Blu-ray copy of it then on 3D. Amazing. Uh, so might be better. maybe next time you're over this way, maybe yeah, I'd we be could up for that. possibly give it a go again. You know, yeah. I'd I be was up for thinking that. though of getting the taking out the the glasses thing and just sticking them on my bloody glasses. <laughs> Prescription 3D glasses. Fuck I love yeah. it. Yeah, old school though. Eighties 3D glasses. Yeah. Um, should we well, do this? Yeah, let's go into a trailer for Friday the Thirteenth Part Two. Yeah, let's check it out. I don't want to scare anyone, but I'm going to give it to you straight about Jason. Hey, you guys, look at this. It's Camp Blood. This place is on the same lake as we're going to be. Good morning, Jules. Are you still out there? Jason. Some sort of demented creature. If I was you, I'd have located in the next county. Quiet for five years, and that's the way we want to keep it. Legend has it that Jason saw his mother beheaded, and he took his revenge. A revenge that he'll continue to seek if anyone ever enters his wilderness again. Oh my god, oh my god. 
Friday the 13th, part two, from 1981. Five years after the event of the first film, a summer camp next to the infamous Camp Crystal Lake is preparing to open, but the legend of Jason is weighing heavy on the proceedings. Yeah. Um, straight, straight, fucking. Ah, oh, that quick. That made some money. Quick, let's n- knock out another one. Yeah. Very quick to make. Um, not always a good sign. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it isn't. Um, I two and three. It's funny because when reviewing films, you kind of look at them differently. Um, I didn't like. The, I know they're not my favourites in the series. I know later on there's some others which are later on. Uh, I like more. Uh, two and three for me are the weak ones. You said earlier on though, you they're strong points for you. Yeah, I, I've realised that. Um, yes, I do still prefer some of the later entries. Obviously, six is my favourite. I think it's your favourite as well. But so I don't know what it was about two and three, but I really appreciated them more uh, this time around. Um, just got a lot, a lot out of them, and I feel like they're more. Uh, they follow them, but the slasher blueprint more. And even the first one, obviously, the first one, it was still trying things out, you know, and setting the rules. Um, whereas I think, especially by the third one, you know, you've got your, your kids ready to, to be slaughtered. And uh, it's how it is, really. And especially by the third one, which obviously I'm getting ahead of us. But by then as well, you've got your kind of like your horniness and your teenagers and your, your weed smokers and everything. But let's talk about number two, because to me, two is still good, though. Um uh, it's a shame. Yeah, uh, I um I don't think they really uh got the Friday thirteenth movie until part four. That's when I think the formula was like this is the formula, you know. Um personally. I think they were building steps along the way with these three films. I think three's yeah. a magic number for sure. And with these they were just discovering stuff and by, I, I by the third they got a, this is what Jason's gonna be. A hockey mask, etc. I, et cetera, I, et cetera, yeah. I think by part three they definitely had the majority of it mapped out um and you even started seeing some of the humor with his kills in part three um but yeah you're right and in, in this one you know this is still very playing it very straight yeah um you know and even the way jason looks as we know in this he wears a sack on his head uh, in part two he you know he's not uh no. He's, you know, he's not got his traditional hockey mask on. It's pretty much the uh, town that dreads sundown. Yeah, uh, well, they, they did that. Uh, a cross between that and the Elephant Man they did because they wanted to yeah. make it look, you know, unique but also familiar. Yeah, um, uh, I love the sack look. Uh, we've tried it with something uh, before with the Joseph is Missing thing, which I'll come back to another point sometime. Uh, and we've still got a bit of that in there. I love that look. I don't know why. It's a really weird one. Uh, but it, you just think it's someone so deranged is underneath it to put a sack on the head. Yeah. Sarah, Sarah was watching this one and she's like, has he only done one hole uh, for his eye? What do you think he did? And I said, well, he's a bit, he's a bit not very clever, is he? He's not got much intelligence, <laughs> I don't think Jason has. Um, but you, and she's like, you think he'd make it easier for himself? Because he is a bit buffoon. He is almost scream-like buffoonish, like so some of his stuff. He, uh, he, in the third one, uh, his like, arch enemy is just this lady. She's no one in particular. She didn't show earlier on in the movie smear kung fu skills or some shit. And she's kicking his ass. It's like, come on, mm. you're not doing too well, Jason. Come on, that's she what kicks- I said. Come fourth one, he's he's in the stride. She kicks him in the balls. Yeah, he's he's, he's a bit more immortal. In twice the she kill almost kills him twice. Yeah, so how did she achieve this? <laughs> something else that the before we get into like the cast and and then into the the plot, something else that I've noticed watching two and three is the Friday the Thirteenth movies do something very very well, and that is the the final girl. Is, a fi- is always a very interesting character, someone you really root for, someone you really like, but and they're not whiny or you know any of these sort of things. They're just, a ba- they're genuine, genuinely. You just summed it up for part three. They're always a bit of a badass. I really, really like Ginny in part two. Um, I think she's a great character. She's very strong, strong-willed. Yeah, I don't. She's mind very it. much yeah. in charge of her. She- relationship with the guy she, yeah. she's that's what i'm saying they they weren't they didn't have it down yet she doesn't s- almost seem like the final girl she's she's strong but she doesn't seem final girl strong does that make sense like later on some of the movies though they are a bit more 
Oh, I might be wrong. It's, that's the best thing about doing this and reviewing all these films. As we go, I can sort of see how it progresses. Well, he, even Alice from the first movie is very strong, you know, and she, she bleeds over into this movie, but she didn't want to do the full movie as part of her contract, so they kill they kill her off in the opening scene. Um, um, uh, mm. Tom Savini chose the burning over this um uh, he just didn't want to. He read the script. I um, mean, he just wasn't into it. Um, didn't want to do it. Um, so, they, so Sta- Sam uh, Stan Winston was going to come on board. Um, he did, but, uh, but then, but he said he had co- co- uh, scheduling conflicts. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Chim Chin there. Uh, I, I, I think it's just like I'm not doing a Friday Fan Part Two. Like you know, he went on to make the T Rex in Jurassic Park. Do you know what I mean? He went on to do. Um... He oh. did direct one uh, a movie himself actually around. Oh no, it's probably late eighties. Did he do um, American Werewolf? Uh, no, that's Rick Baker. Rick Baker, of course, of course. And of course, you had uh, <clears throat> on a side tangent. You had Rob Oteen was uh, in nineteen eighty two was uh, starting work on the thing, wasn't he? So you had lots of. Uh, uh, well, uh, effects guys in the early eighties were rock and roll stars. They were they the dudes, man. big as rock and roll stars. They were though, like they were like doing a lot of cocaine, wearing leather jackets, big long hair, and they were partying. Crazy. Just like yeah. John Carpenter. No, no, I think it's a really good book, which I mean to read at some point. I haven't known. It's like stories of like the eighties, like effects artists or what they're doing behind, like stuff that make you look at movies differently, like the effects they use, what they're doing with them, like fucking around with them, and like. Doing blow off them and stuff, you know. Amazing. Um, uh, so yeah, this other effects artist came on. Um, well, what, was it this one or was it the next one? Not sure. I won't say that just in case. Carry on, my friend. Well, three characters that come back from from part one, uh, all very briefly, are um, Betsy Palmer's back as just a bit of um, Mrs. Voorhees um, doing some sort of. Uh, was this the info dump at the beginning? No, no, she 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 came back to record those uh, scenes where later on where she's tricking Ginny's tricking Jason towards the end, um, and obviously Crazy Ralph came back very briefly. Yeah, yeah, it was um, it was nice they chose to do a continuation. Um, I guess they're following Halloween. When did Halloween two come out? Uh, I think it was the year before this one. Okay. 80. Um, yeah, the first three Friday the 13th movies, all back to back, they all they all follow on from each other very, very closely. Um, so I guess let's get into it. Uh, so we, we get a very quick scene at the beginning where there's a child walking through the city singing Itsy Bitsy Spider, and then we see Jason Voorhees legs following along, and as soon as we see him, there's a lot of borrowing of other movies i've realized the score in three especially but also in this one is a real cross between psycho and jewels uh you've got the strings from psycho but you've got the stabbing sort of dun, 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 and then the jewels stuff coming in it's it's very good and whenever jason is on screen you do get his sound his motif his sound motif and his music when it's not him you'll know when, so when there's a red herring and you're seeing some legs following somebody, if you listen, if it's not playing that Friday the 13th theme, you know it's not Jason. I've realised that. Just like in Jaws, if if you're not hearing that John Williams score, it isn't the shark. It's just some kid with a fin. It's very interesting. Yeah, well, um, it, it's great to get motifs in uh, uh, films. That's what this is. This is like there's some just the smallest things sometimes which have made some films not become like the classic like the burning or some other things come like these like sequels like burning part three and do you know what i mean um all that stuff sometimes it's things like not having a motif for the killer something which is really memorable because like me and you on this one like, kids have doing, been been doing that in their playground after watching this movie or if you've yeah. not seen it they've been doing that sort of stuff and halloween yep. i know it's a, it's not a motif it's the theme but having these things uh, is so important for uh, uh, these films to make, and this is what helped them become cult things and continue, you know. But not just that 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 sh- sh- 
motif he's also like the score the theme for jason yeah yeah you know it when you hear it you hear it's, it's either like a cello like, uh, 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 like when he's, you see a foot step into a room or something it's just all very you know you're watching a friday the 13th movie when you hear that and it's great so we get this at the beginning when we see and these that, legs that's why harry along. manfredini <clears throat> yeah really um, great score it's, it, it's really good score and i love the fact that he came up with that you know kill kill um, yeah. Uh, kill, him, it, kill her, it, mummy. It was kill her. just a, a strike of uh, genius, really, because it, it's the same with the Jaws thing. When it gets not to be on a musical note for too long, <laughs> um, uh, hmm. um, it is just Jaws is dun dun and it's just two different notes. You but know, it works, and that's what we need: uh, simplicity and repetition. You know. Well, we're about to get a really cheap info dump um basically they're going to replay the end a couple of scenes from part one it's look they do this in part three as well and looking at it as a producer type of state of mind i'll be like yeah great we can get a good six Save minutes of the movie in here and uh we, we we're just rehashing and if you haven't seen the previous entry in a long time it, it, good but in a way they were trying stuff out they didn't know what they're doing um i don't think we have these later on in the movies so you're right because <clears> this was before vhs boom so people unless you're really uh when vhs came out you had to be really rich or your dad worked for an uh, electrical department do you know what i mean mm. um because it was so expensive but if you didn't and you were only going to cinema you yeah you're right um you still have to wait a year or two years for this next movie to come out i guess a year um, to remember what happened, so yeah, I suppose they're right in doing an info dump. But it feels it feels okay for them because it you know we, we see Alice from the first movie; she's having her a nightmare about what happened, and then we get the recap, you know, and it all culminates in her beheading uh, Mrs. Voorhees, and then she wakes up, um, and she she gets a phone call from her mum. She's now an artist. She's obviously still got PTSD from what happened to her at Camp Crystal Lake. She's put her life back together. <laughs> Yeah, she's trying. You know, she's trying. She's like, "All right, Mum, look, I- I'm going to go and have a shower." She goes and has a shower. You, uh, none of this was scripted. It's completely. Oh, really? it's, even the phone call was complete improv. She's wandering around. We f- we get the sense sense that somebody else is in the apartment. We get the classic cat jump through the window. It's nice because we're doing here almost like it. Kind of feels like you're watching uh, the first Halloween with the steady cam walking around the building. It's a little because bit it's of a giallo. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a one-er, almost, yeah. and it's a steady cam, just <clears> following around. Like you say, giallo's very much st- would follow the maiden around the apartment block, what, after watching what she did and going with her. And it's it's quite good. It keeps, it's a nice little build-up, yeah, but a cat thrown through a window. I've never had a cat, yeah, cat the, the, f- jump at me like that. The tension building, you know, it goes from a phone call to is there someone behind her in the in the mirror and there's put in the, in the bathroom to the cat and then all of a sudden like, oh thank god it was just a cat and then she says all right i'll get you some food and she opens the fridge and dun 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 jason's mum's head is in the fridge um you do have a bit before that where she goes to have a shower and then she just and the camera all of a sudden now the camera's like putting across that we are the point of view of the killer so the camera's got a and she pulls the shaker and open and breaks the full forward by staring at the camera and then yeah, it cuts it's and it's like yeah but it's a bit weird I like that though. I do like that. What was she actually staring at in real life? Nothing. If it, if we she were like, there, you know, she's looking at you. Oh. Um, yes. Yeah, so Jason's mum's head, Pamela Voorhees' head, is in her fridge, and then she's stabbed in the head with a knife. And but just before, Jason, just very before nicely, that, the phone rang and no one was there. Was Jason uh, uh, on the phone going? Yeah, I'm not going to, not going to answer. Yeah. Well, did he know the yeah. number? We've talked about this before. Jason loves winding people up. That's why he hides bodies. <laughs> he's a right little fucking joker. But, but what, he's also quite considerate, because after he stabs Alice in the head with a knife, he then just takes the kettle off the stove for... Because it's boiling over, isn't it? Do you notice he does that? <laughs> just his big hand comes in and just pops that onto there. <laughs> there we go. Why does he, he do that? that? He's considerate. He thinks, look, I may have stabbed her in the head, but I don't want her to Or it's going to put off my fucking flow. I'm ready to do some slicing and some dicing. I've got my knife. I want to hear that. I want to scream. I want to hear the body fud to the floor. 
I don't want my mind taken up on a kettle and the fucking boiler over it. Do you know what I'd love though is if, if the 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 uncut version of that scene is him taking the kettle off the boil, yeah. then he sets up a little cup of tea, then he pours out a cup of tea, then he sits in the chair with his leg crossed and looks at Alice's body on the floor and sort of sips his tea with his little then finger. He, up, he yeah. gets a digestive and dips it in, mm. but then it goes soggy and drops in. And he goes, "Oh shit." Damn it. Well, there we go. So that's the opening. And then we get an explode. The title card <laughs> literally explodes. Lovely onto listeners. The Jason isn't at the end of that ending, sitting there with a cup of tea, legs crossed, annoyed that his dunked biscuit is, is gone. No. He's not. That's not actually what happens. He just takes the kettle off the boil. And then we get the title card explode onto the screen, and the score just kicks in. And it's a fantastic score. If you know your your, your horror movies or your J- if you love Jason, you'll, you'll love hearing this but, score. But, but before we get into this, what was all that about? Well, he's getting rid of Alice, isn't he? She survived. So he's come, did- he's come and killed her. Really, we need do need to get... If we really want to get into that, how did he find her? Where does he know where she is? You know... Why did he get his mum's head from? Where did he get his mum's head from? So he does this for 11 films. He does this for 11 films. No, let... Look. Look. Let me listen. No, no. You let me listen. listen. Let me talk. Right. Beginning of this, we're having a bit of a rehash from the last one. So he dies. Let's just run through his, <clears> what's going on next. We need to know what's going on for all these Friday the 13th movies. We need a, through, a time through, like, like a, you know, like an arrow, all the way through. Here we go. He's there, uh, uh, dead on the floor, but he's not. He gets up. So he must have picked up his mum's head from the table. Right, oh, I need that for something. It's my mum's head. <laughs> I might as well get it. It does get the jumper as well. Does, oh, no, it doesn't. But the jumper comes back next time, I think. It's really weird. The so he the takes too. the head, so he's like, right, I'm going to hang out for a while with my mum's head. Uh, like a year later, there she is. It's three months later. Th- oh, it's three months. Right, there she is. I'm getting in the window, and I'm putting my mum's head in the fridge. Hopefully she's going to the fridge. If she doesn't, it's totally ruined, and she just sees me. I'm going to have to pull her over there and say, look, look in the fridge. That's supposed to scare you. Look in the fridge. That's going to scare you. Now I'm going to kill you. But you missed out because you didn't go there for your cup of tea. And... You know, all right. That's where we're at. But uh, I don't even know if, if the if it matters because I don't know if it's a flashback because a lot of the beginnings and endings of the yeah. Jason first Jason movies can all be if you want you can see them as like a bit of a dream or a nightmare, you know. So this could be just a nightmare. This could be not have happened. Either way, it's it, you know it's it's basically Alice was contracted. The, the actress, uh, Adrian King. Yeah, she didn't King. want to do uh, a, she was contra- a full She was contracted sequel. to be in it, but, so they, they killed her off. And it's fine. It works for me. Um, well, well, it's rehashed that. She only would have had to... Oh, no, she, no sorry, yes. Uh, and Continue. it was copied but copied later by films like Scream, where you yeah. had an, in, an opening scene where someone was killed off. And you were like, oh, okay. So I thought that was going to be our main star. So it would have shocked people back in the day. They went to watch before the internet, and they didn't know anything about the plot. They went to watch the second movie... And I, oh look, there's the girl from the first movie. Oh, they've killed her off within the first five minutes. Wow, anything goes. So I yeah. think it would have worked. Um, Do you know the, the trouble of watching both these movies is so close to each other is I'm getting both of these movies kind of mixed up as one film. I'm thinking of some things. I'm like, oh no, I think that's the next movie. I think that's part three. Well, I'll try and keep you on track. <coughs> okay. Um, so we then meet our first couple of new people, Jeffrey I love and that Sandra. Truck. It's a big it's fucking truck. Badass four by four. Yeah. And they arrive in town near Crystal Lake, and they because um, no one's got mobiles because it's 1981. They get out of their car and they uh, go over to a phone booth, and they call Ted and say, "Ted, we're in town. Where do you want us to meet you?" Yeah, okay, we can come and meet you there. You know that's great. And there's this hilarious thing going on in the background where you see a guy pulled up to this there. This dude was like a fucking London uh, 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 traffic warden fucking you literally turn your head they're there they're, they're sitting there waiting because they get a, they get a commission so they're waiting for you just to do it they're fucking there this guy is in seconds reverse it up starts down and he takes it away He's like motherfucker we do find out it's a gag yeah so, well, so he was he was set up already but it did look like a london one <laughs> we also meet crazy ralph at this point don't we it's a death curse Oh, they keep coming back here. They're never going to learn their lesson. Um, yeah, but it, like you said, it was actually a prank because they chased the car and it was their buddy Ted Yo who did dude. it. Um, and 
yeah, he's, he's a bit of a... They're old friends, and he says, this is going to be just like dude's, old times. This is a fucking douchebag. He is, Oh, no, fuck him. He is a douchebag. He's long, stringy, piece of piss, fucking curly-haired motherfucker. He is just like... He's annoying for me. I don't mind the other fella, Shelley. I don't mind Shelley too much. I'd rather get rid of this guy than Shelley. Yeah, well... He's probably the most annoying one in this movie. Um, so they they're driving along, and the tree on their on the way. In fact, he doesn't die. Who? Ted. The 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 one the douchebag Ted. I was saying, nerd. Yeah, he doesn't die. Yeah, no, he doesn't. It's incredible. You expect him to die. Um, he thinks <laughs> he was in another movie and he died on it, and he said it looked awful. He thinks they saw that and thought, no, he's too bad. Just leave him at the diner. <laughs> Getting drunk. Um, so they, they're on their way to the, the, the camp, which they don't know used to be Crystal Lake. They, they um, see a little sign, don't they, on the, on the, in the grass? Well, there's a tree in the road. Someone's blocked the road with a tree. So, so they, they, they anyway. yeah. And that's where Sandra finds the sign that says Camp Crystal Lake. And one of the guys says, oh, Camp Blood. Don't worry, you don't want to, you don't want to know about it. It's a, it's a scary story. Um, but it's right right by where our camp is. It's literally the next beach over from our camp. And all the while, we get the POV of somebody in behind a tree just peeking out going, ch 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 cack 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 Who could it be? And it's brilliant. All you got to do is just have your camera f- filming from a distance with some bushes in front, play that kick kick cack It's brilliant. And that's it. That's all you need. You, know you can is. just keep doing it. And it us as fans, because we fucking love the series now. I love it. It's my favourite series of slashes. Um, us as fans, we're just sitting there with our legs like, okay, fuck yeah. Like picking shit. That's great. Just give me more. Give me more Jason POV. Well, they pull up to the camp, and this is where we meet the leader of the camp, Paul. Paul the grown up, the leader. Paul the other and one. And he's, he's giving a speech. Do you know the expression it's... Paul the other one comes from? No. Uh, when uh, people were being hung. Um, the the uh, uh, um, the uh, f- family and that to make it better for them would come along and pull on their legs to kill them quicker. Ah. So sometimes they say pull on the other one, so they get the, someone else to jump on the other leg and pull them down. Wow! So they die quicker. So your loved ones would kill you quicker because it was painful. Do you know where the expression "close but no cigar" comes from? No. Back in the day, uh, in the late last century, when carnivals were a thing, not last century, the century before, 18-something or other, um, they, carnivals were actually more um, for like, adults. So you'd go there and you play all the games, but it's more for adults rather than sort of children. So a lot of the prizes were cigars. So the guy that, who was like running whatever the game was you were playing would often shout, Close, but no cigar! Oh. And, that, and, that, and that's where it comes so, from. So kids could win cigars? Well, it wasn't really for kids. Like I say, carnivals were more aimed at But you know, adults you know the then. guy would be like, oh, go on, kid, go have a good time. Yeah, well, and it, it was encouraged back then for kids to smoke. It was crazy. But yeah, we meet Paul the leader, and he's giving a speech. We, we've got Vicky, uh, we've got Wheelchair Mark. <laughs> is that his aware. name? It's not his name, but he is in a wheelchair. We've got Vicky the Great Butt. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, the sexy one. Then you've got the guy who with the sexy eyes... He got, you know, he's, uh, I've called him Catapult Scott because he fires a catapult at Vicky's sexy butt. Catapult Scott. Yeah. Uh, uh, and yeah, so Paul's giving this speech to everybody. Um, and he's in the middle of, sort of saying, you know, I don't know, I've got one more person due to arrive. But let me tell you all, you know, we're here to get set up for the camp. We're going to spend the next couple of weeks getting to know the area. We're going to practice first aid and all, all that kind of stuff oh and then Ginny pulls up in her Volkswagen Beetle so she pulls up there isn't this the same sort of thing as the first one the girlfriend turns up later don't she yeah well they, they don't give a shit the you final got, girls you got, you got Ned Flanders in the first one haven't you being annoyed <laughs> well she he says let me just have a word with Ginny because she's late and he takes her into the office and you go and have a word it's in a very uh, Harvey Weinstein type of way well, they have a little kiss. It turns out they've secretly got a little relationship going on. Um, so, they, but they don't want to tell any of the other camp, the other guys yet on the camp. So, anyway, they, they sort of, she says, well, I'm here now. Let's go out. So, he carries on with his speech. They all go back outside and he says, right. And the, the final thing to mention is there are bears in these woods. So, ladies, please don't wear perfume. And if you're menstruating, keep yourself clean. And they were just looking at each other like, okay. 
And that's it. Yeah. Cut to night time. Spooky story. Now I know you all, uh, he says, now I know you all wondering about camp blood. Well, let me tell you about Jason Voorhees. And he tells this long story about Jason and what happened. And is, he could still be out there living wild in the woods like some madman, man, man, Mars, living out there in the woods. And just at the crucial moment, Ted jumps out with a caveman mask on and a spear and scares everybody, doesn't he, Gav? Everybody scared. It's very scary. Oh, Ted, you asshole. Um... But he says, but don't forget, we're to bed now. But just for you to bed, don't forget, I'm serious when I say Crystal Lake is off limits. Well, that's like a red rag to a ball, isn't it, for these kids? Yeah, since um, having children, I know uh, to uh, generally not say, don't be bad. Cause don't go to, rest, yeah, don't go to Crystal Lake. It probably could be bad. Well, later on that evening, we've got music, video games, board games, arm wrestling, it's all going on. Um, it's a fucking party. Yeah, having a little party. Ginny, Ginny goes off to bed. Um, Sandra saying to Jeff, look, I really want to go and see that lake. And he's like, well, we, we've been told to not go. And she's like, don't be such a pussy. If you, if you and me go to the lake, we could get up to all sorts. So she's sowing seeds. About it, and he's thinking, oh, maybe I'll go there. Maybe I'll get get my end away if I do go there with her. Paul sneaks up into Ginny's room. And they have a little kiss and a little chat. Uh, meanwhile, someone's outside spying on them. It's not Jason. That's fucking Ralph. It's crazy Ralph. Oh, they're having a party in there. I put up my plunker. Why, why are they having a party inside? Oh God, I sound like bubbles from uh, <laughs> trying to put poison. Why are they having a party inside? Um, but he gets his neck uh, sort of garroted. Yeah, he just comes down his neck and just pulls him up. Yeah. Yeah. And Jason says, so "Jason's killed off crazy Ralph." Yep. Bye, bye, Ralph. Well, morning time, and everyone's like running, 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 running. Uh, and there's someone watching them. Uh, Wonder who that is. Who could it be, Gav? Uh, the sheriff comes along, says, you got to keep all your people out the woods and stuff. I caught these guys in the woods. Oh, yeah, because they go off and find Crystal Lake, and then they get arrested. But I think you've jumped quite far ahead there. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Um, they're just running. I don't know what happens really after running. Yeah, no, they're sort of running and... Um, oh, that's right. They've got Muffin, the dog. And Muffin goes missing. Uh, they set up that there's a chainsaw at the camp and they're setting up a barbecue. Um, and Ginny is being watched quite heavily. So Ginny's going to be our final girl. And she seems to be the one that Jason has singled out here. Not sure why. But yeah, at the beach, then Sandra, um, she's begging Jeff begging Jeff to go to Crystal Lake the others are all on a raft very similar to that raft that we saw in the creep show 2 I think it was yeah yeah standard standard fucking yeah it's creep show 2 the raft we, is we, the uh, yeah. story it's fairly standard we, we've seen we've seen this sort of raft before so Jeff and Sandra do go there and someone is following them but they find a dog a dead dog it's all mangled up and we think well this could be Muffin this could be Muffin dead and this is where the cop catches them. Dead muff. Dead muff. The cop catches them. He takes them back and he says to Paul, quite rightly, as you said, I want you to keep your people in check. You shouldn't even be here, to be honest with you. I don't know why you're here. This, we've already had enough heartache in this town and we don't need more. Keep, If you're going to be here with your kids, keep them under control for God's sake. So there's a lot of tension here from the sheriff and Paul. And Paul doesn't give a shit, really. And then the sheriff spots somebody in the woods, and it's Jason. Mm. And he chases him. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, what, at what point did the sheriff get so much out of uh, shape? Like He does a fair good he job is. at running, but he's so out of shape, and you always find this with some of these side like, movies. It's like a stand. It's like just thrown on there. I'm sure this is not the state of sheriffs in towns. I don't know. I have no idea. But he... He does he's a fair job running, but he could, he could lose a few pounds, couldn't he? The, the problem is, he's decided, I'm going to chase on foot. Considering he is a, a sheriff, he might have to chase 
bad yeah, people. You through wanna, the woods. Want to be a bit more, you know. He decides, I'm going to chase this guy through the woods, but he can't run for more than five minutes. He keeps stopping and bending over and catching his breath. <laughs> but eventually, eventually, he comes across Jason's house, doesn't he? This old, old shack, shack in the woods. Yeah, yeah. It's the love shack, baby. The love shack, baby. Do you think this is a, a Jason's love shack? Yeah. I bet he has a little stereo and he'd listen to that. He's got his mum's head in there. That came out yet, I suppose, in 81. Um, uh, so the sheriff goes inside and he sees walks into a room and he sees something off camera which we later find out is the shrine including Jason's mother's head um, but we see, we see him see something off camera and he's horrified but whatever it is and as he does that it's hammer time because he gets a hammer in the back of the head he gets the claw part of the hammer oh no not good just like in uh, old boy yeah so there we go so Paul says right we're all having dinner but listen I've got a surprise for you all Tonight, we can all go and get pissed, if you want. We're all going to get really drunk in the local bar. Everyone let's, happy to do that? Well, let's drive to the bar, both of us, two vehicles. Uh, and then, then drive back. Wasted. And then drive back. Seems to be another thing standard in uh, uh, American movies a lot. Are still, the early I'd, 80s, I would say. You still do get it in some of them, though, where it's just... Just it's not even questioned. Like surely you've had for like three or four drinks and you shouldn't be driving. It's sometimes not even questioned. They just do it. I think okay. there was there was a big campaign, wasn't there, in the uh, mid eighties of Must don't drink been. and drive. But it's I think so, before it's that, so it was just strict like, over. It's very frowned upon if you were to drink drive nowadays. I feel like in England, you know, I don't really know. I don't. Well, I don't frequent watering holes anymore. I would say that um, it's not frowned upon in rural parts. No, so if you go true. down to the coast no. where there's little villages, people will just drive around after a few drinks because there's not not far usually to drive. I'm not condoning it, um, and they know the roads very well. But um, you know, I was shocked to visit a village a few years back, and the person I was visiting there met us at a pub. We all had about three beers. Then he drove us to another pub, and we had a couple more beers, and then drove us to another pub. And I thought, hang on, he's had about five or six beers now, yeah, but it just not- wasn't a thing. Yeah, but it's still very good. Easily on those country roads was, to fucking die. I was very uncomfortable with it. Oh yeah, uh, fuck! I wouldn't be getting in the car. I'm not getting in your car. Fuck that. It's not not good. No. Well, I you know I never got in your car again after you did that. Let's be honest. Um, I'm joking. It wasn't Gavin, by the way. Uh, so where were we? Oh yes. Yeah, so sheriff is killed. So Paul says, "Let's go to the bar and you know get drunk." Um, few of them decide though that they do not want to go. Uh, wheelchair Mark says I'm not going I'm in training and I'll be staying here and the girl that's hitting on him says oh well I'll stay here as well then she wants cock she wants him so badly she, I love the fact she basically says to him so basically is your cock working yeah it is well, let's get going we'll get to that we'll get to that she's she's like a little uh, ball with a red rag she is she can't stop yeah, dog with is. a bone yeah. Um, while they're all chatting and getting ready to leave for the bar, we do see the shadow of Jason walking around, so we know he's there. Um, Terry says, I'm going to go for a walk, guys, in the dark, on my own. Okay, then off you go, Terry. So she goes off, and she decides, well, this is probably a good time for me to go skinny dipping now as well. Why? 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 Well, I, it was fine for me. I mean, it was fine for me. <laughs> <laughs> we get some bush. Um, so she, she goes in the um the water and someone's watching her but if you listen carefully there's no motif so it's not jason hmm. no it's um scott catapult scott decides he's gonna steal her clothes sexy eyes mr slick and she says give me that back you asshole and he runs off with her clothes well that's gonna get her laid isn't it Jesus. If she, if she didn't want to get laid, she would definitely not have stripped completely naked off and said, let's go down to the river with him. While this is going on, there's some arm wrestling happening back at the shack, and uh, Mark is beating everybody, just taking everybody out. And Vicky, Vicky is flirting so much, she's like, oh, I, I want to I wanna arm wrestle you as well. Go gentle with me, though. <laughs> and she's trying to get him to sort of smooth the join. Have, he does have quite big arms from his wheelchair, though, so I feel he's at advantage, though, slightly. Yeah. Um, 
Well, before we get to the, those two again, setting up their little sexiness, we go back to what's happening with Terry chasing Scott and um, Scott gets caught in one of those sort of lasso ankle traps. Yeah, which we wanted to do, didn't we? I thought about uh, Sanctuary yeah, yeah. Moon. We I wanted did too. to. It was in a script like that, and we're like, how the fuck do we do that with like not loads of safety people and rigging? You know, it taken a whole nother. We could have done it, but it would have taken a whole day to set up. But they did really well. It looks really good. Well, he gets his comeuppance, Scott. Yeah, he gets pulled up into the tree and he's upside down. And, um, you know, they assume that someone's laid out a trap for animals. And Terry's laughing at him. She's like, well, that was he. She was stealing my clothes, you asshole. And he's like, okay, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I won't do it again. He, you genuinely feel like he's probably learned his lesson there. She says, all right, I'll go and find something to cut you down. You stay here. I, I might come back ha 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 and he's like just hurry up for god's sake and while he's hanging upside down gav someone walks up to him yes yeah, slits his throat slits his throat and of course if you're upside down and your throat's been slit you're going to bleed out aren't you mm. oh nice um terry goes back to him when she once she's got something to cut him down and spins him around and of course she realizes his throat is slit so she screams he's brown bread he's brown bread mate so Let's cut to the bar where everybody is now. They've and, got a um, kiss pinball machine. They've got a kiss pinball machine. There's a band playing. They're all sat at the bar discussing Jason. Is he real? Is he not real? You know. It's the best thing about watching Blu-rays. You can sort of spot things and be like, oh, check out that pinball machine. Like, <laughs> that's so cool. You know? I'd, like, I'd love a kiss pinball machine. <laughs> yeah. Um, then we cut back to the cabin, and this is where everybody's starting to get hooked up for the night now. So, um, obviously, we've got uh, Sandra and Jeff. They go off to, to get it on. Um, and this is where Vicky is hitting on Mark, wheelchair Mark, so hard. Poor Mark. He says to her... Poor Mark. He says, like, I can't, I can't have any drinks so I'm in training. I, and she's like, oh, well, What's why don't we smoke this joint? For? That's what she says to him. She says, uh, what about this joint? And he's like, I can't smoke that. I'm in training. She said, what are you in training for? He doesn't ever say... But then she says to him, so, uh, you know, is that forever? Are you always going to be in a wheelchair? And he says, well, the doctors say that that's the case, but I'm going to prove everyone wrong. I, I'm going to walk again. Yeah, no, totally. I, I, was, I was rooting for him, actually. Um, yeah, yeah, totally. He's a good um, guy. Yeah, I, I'm actually going to steal that one day for a movie. I'm going to have someone in it just keep saying I'm in training for ne never ex say why. <laughs> that would be fucking great. If, um, I, if I ever get you as a character again in a movie, I'll just have you just saying I'm in training. Yeah, but that could be that's a great excuse at any party or anything, isn't it? Don't you want to drink? Do it. I'm, in I'm, I'm in training. Just have that one person training. Do you want some cocaine? I'm in training. Did, Barry, did you? Oh, you're training, right? Okay. Dan, do you want a biscuit? No, I'm in training. <laughs> Dan, you coming to the pub? No, I'm in training. All right, we get the idea. Come on. Well, Vicky says, uh, not Vicky. Yeah, Vicky says to uh, Mark, like you said earlier. So, is it just your legs or? Have you got There's a nothing worth below the waist, and he, he's like, "No, no, yeah. no, I, do, I do all right in other areas." And she's like, "Right, I'm going to go and put my sexy brown pants on then." <laughs> and they are kind of plasticky and shiny. They're very brown, um, and they're very shiny. And they definitely, she's a bit like, "Oh, I better put a bit of perfume down there." She sprays herself, then she sprays her vagina. I, I, see, I when I've seen it loads of times. Uh, spray her vagina when I've watched this film. Like you know, it's, that's what it's spray her vagina. Um, um, didn't really think of it. So uh, a lady with me watching, she went, Ugh. I don't know what Sarah's thinking, but I didn't know a lady's perspective of spraying it. I didn't know if there's actually a thing. I don't know if Sarah ever just sprays her underwear <laughs> with uh, a perfume. I don't think so. So I didn't know. So it's interesting to know a lady's perspective because I've always been like, oh, I guess that's what they do. I don't know. I've got no problem with spraying that, but what I have got a problem with is the what she considers sexy underwear. But again, this was 1981, so... Do you think... At least Brown and the women show any stains. Well, as this is going on, no, it's true. As this is going on, Jason is um, watching. Do you think he ever just... Does a Vince Vaughn... It gets a little bit psycho. hard. It rubs against his trousers. No, I don't think Jason knows what any of that is. Do you think he's that, like, unintelligent, like, really, like... Yeah. Bottom scale. I don't I, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think his mum probably cut it off when he was little. Yeah, uh, cut what off? Oh, Willie, yeah. Yeah, it's Willie. 
Well, Mark decides to go outside in his wheelchair. I don't think so. He wheels outside and he sort of has a look around. <laughs> And he thinks, is anyone out here? He yeah, has a little wheel around outside. And then suddenly he gets a machete straight to the face. Um, and that's not the worst thing that happens to him then. Then his wheelchair is shoved down the biggest flight <laughs> stairs. Ever. Are you saying, like, you know, I'm sorry about this, but I'm going to machete your face, but that's not the worst of it. You're then going to have that machete going in and out your face as it bounces <laughs> down the <laughs> <steps>. <laughs> ow, It gets on for so ow. long. And then, yeah, it's amazing how it stays upright as well. And then it freeze frames. And my wife said to me, why the hell is it freeze frame? And I said, because I should imagine the dummy went flying out <laughs> yeah, of that wheelchair. Yeah, so they decided like we, we, better, we better freeze frame. That's the only way around no, this is what, to freeze frame what, it. What, what, it's brilliant. What they do is a straight on shot of it coming down the steps. But then you think it goes on for ages. It doesn't actually. You cut to a side shot and it's the same. Yeah, it it's going from they the film the same thing for about they, three cameras. They cut it just as it. Stop, the, the chair starts to go so guaranteed that like you say that last bit of the chair just went and the dummy just flew out and it looks stupid as shit but I love it I, um, and it was kind of um, <laughs> uh, Bay of Blood Mario Bob's Bay of Blood, Bay of Blood there's two kills in this which actually uh, Sean Connery was like oh, I didn't I've never seen Bay of Blood yeah right yeah, yeah right okay yeah because <clears throat> you've got two exact they even look framed the same kills um, so yeah <laughs> And this was one machete in the face. So, Mark's dead now. Oh, bless him. I like him. him. He was just about to get his end away as well. He was. Um, he was. Because she sort of says to him earlier, I think we forgot to say, we're going to paint Franklin, video games. there's another wheelchair uh, horror, horror oh, dude. Yeah. And then there's a dude in um, Nightmare Elm Street who, when he has a dream, he can walk. Yeah, he's like an acrobat. That one and, as well, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, she says to him just before all of that, she's like, which video game should we play, basketball or hockey? And she's like, I like the one with the puck. She's like, really flirting with him, really flirting with him. Anyway, he's dead. You, you, you know that <clears throat> get her into bed and she gets off her plasticky pants, you know it's just like going to be crazy or something, like, like to the point where you're like, um, can we not? I've got a headache. Can I go? Ah. Oh, suddenly my penis doesn't work. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. I don't fancy doing this now because you're insane. <laughs> Um, well, Jason steps into the the uh, house and he spots the caveman mask from earlier and thinks, "Oh, I'll put that on." So Jason again, yeah. you know, always thinking. Always, um, always not. He's, no, he's not always thinking. If your kettle's over boiling or you've got a caveman mask lying around, I Jason just, is there. <laughs> we're breaking down the psychology of Jason Voorhees and his <laughs> intelligence level. Right, I love the fact that we're now to the point where he's so stupid. He he only puts one hole in a sack, so he doesn't really think of putting two holes in it. Yet he is considerate, and he knows that there could be a dangerous thing happen if that kettle stays boiling. Mm-hmm. I, I love the fact that we were breaking down Jason Voorhees as a human being. For, what sort of person he is. Never done this before. I love it. Can't wait for next year. Well, the caveman mask goes on, and we then cut to Jeff and Sandra, and they're just finishing up their sex, all sweaty and sort of smiling. And just as uh, Jeff's about to um, uh, dismount, let's say, <laughs> they get a spear through them both and this is the other bow of blood uh uh death both of them right next to each other as well so it sticks out a little bit yeah so yeah they're dead now yeah um and the rain starts now doesn't it this is atmospheric now um i really actually i enjoy this one more than part three um uh, and I really like this bit when she's just going around the camp and it's deserted and it's rainy. Oh, it's great. It, it, I think it goes on for a little bit, but I do like it, yeah. Well, the, we, we cut back to the bar, and this is where the rain's coming down, and they're like, shit, we better, we better go back now. They decide, you know, even though we've had a 20 beers each, we're going to drive back now. Uh, but they leave, like you said, they leave Ted there for some reason, because um, he's that crap at dying on screen. Um, so everybody decides to drive back, Um Vicky, uh, Vicky's trying to find Mark. She's like, where's Mark? I thought I was going to have sex with him. Where is he? Surely he's, he must kind of gone far. He's in a wheelchair. I've, che- I've, I've, checked, I've checked everywhere. 
She goes upstairs. Well, I'm not going to she... bother checking upstairs. You wouldn't have got <laughs> there, would he? That's true. No offence to anyone in a wheelchair, but no, you know, of course it's not. It's not. It's logical, uh, isn't it? Yeah. But um, she goes upstairs anyway because she thinks, well, this is weird, and she she finds Jeff and Sandra. Uh, well, she thinks she finds Jeff and Sandra, but it's actually Jason that's in the bed in the caveman mask. <laughs> He's not in the bed with a caveman mask on. He's like, I'm going to hide here when she comes in. He's under the covers going... <laughs> she's going, I can't wait, scare him. That's what he's doing. He's like a child. I can't wait. And then yeah. she walks in the room and he's like, boo, I got you. Um, he does. That's very funny. It's the first uh, time, though, in an hour in the movie, we've actually seen all of Jason, like the whole body. Yeah, yeah. It's just been little bits or, you know. Just legs or hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he... He's got a great big knife, and he stabs. He stabs um, Vicky, and she's dead. Um, Power goes out, and then we see him. This is one of the first and only times in the Jason franchise as well, where you see him what, moving face. the bodies around. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah just set a little change. Right, just move that one over there. Hang that one in the wardrobe. Is yeah, but are they now taking uh, uh, again? Are they taking stuff from the original Halloween a little bit? Because obviously Michael does that a bit. Plays with the bodies. Maybe. Hmm. I don't know, I don't know. Um, I, I don't care, I enjoy it. Well, Paul and Ginny get back from the bar. Like you said, it's raining. They wonder why the lights are out. They wonder why there's yeah, no one there's around. there's no one around. It's totally quiet. And they're like, what the fuck? They should be all back here. There should be loads of noise. And where is everybody? So they're looking around. They do a bit of a separation. Um, the, the guy with Ginny, Paul, he does seem like quite a, a guy who could take care of things. Do you know what I mean? So it's... Yeah, they were, and this is a great moment actually. In just a moment, they sort of look around. They see the blood on the bed upstairs, and then they go back down to the living room, and the lights are all out, obviously. And then there's this fantastic moment, and this is the first, I think, the first f bomb we've had in it, and it's a great f bomb because Ginny says, "Paul, someone's in this room," and he looks around, and he says, "What?" And she said, "Someone's in this fucking room," and that's it's, a great chilling moment. It's really, it, it's uh probably in all of the Friday the 13th films is probably the only bit which makes you go this is like a proper film almost yeah it's really scary moment and then you see as she says it the second time you see Jason stand up and obviously he's huge tall big guy he stands up from behind a piece of furniture and just starts fighting with Paul and you're like whoa yeah uh, I got goosebumps just talking about that scene it's so good it is it's actually a pretty decent scene yeah 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 they, then they have a fight you know and paul really tries mm. to fight him but he's jason he's huge potentially immortal um uh she locks herself in the bathroom he chases Ginny because he fights paul off easily he chases Ginny to the bathroom and she um she tries to reach the window but she's also count- conscious that if she lets do- go of the door handle he might come in the bathroom well she head, heads towards the window and suddenly Jason smashes the window and I tell you what, I jumped and I've seen this movie a bunch of times but because I was really into what for some whatever reason I was really into watching it on this, this viewing I jumped when Jason smashes that bathroom window and again, it's really effective jump scare she does manage to run though um, and um, a pitch we get the pitchfork now so this is another weapon we don't see jason use very often until part three uh we get a nice pitchfork through the door um she jumps out the window she runs to her volkswagen beetle obviously it doesn't start no this is where jason cujo's her now she's trapped in her car and he's trying to you know smash in and get her out yeah. he starts stabbing the pitchfork through the roof she manages to to run off um, she kicks Jason in the balls. She actually fights back so well. He, that's what I'm saying. Like he's he's more in this one and the third one, more like uh, uh, Ghostface in the screen films. It really is. It's that until fourth one he starts hit again, PP picking people up. Not in the fourth one, does it? But PP picking fuck's sake, picking people pip, up pip, 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 pip. in the sleeping bags and banging them against trees and shit. You know, he, he turns that into that. Force. Well, Ginny's amazing in this one because she um yeah, 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 she hides this, behind a tree yeah. and then she'll jump out at him and knee him in the balls and then she'll run yeah, up a bit more. Yeah. And she, she does all these great things. She's really good at hiding. Yeah, she really hides behind the strong, car. Strong woman again. Like this, this is the third one as well. Like the last. That's what I'm saying. Like the, that's one, two, and three now where we've had some really good final girls. I, um, I still do really love the fact that we have the empowerment of women. Uh, 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 
early on in the 80s with, with, with like Scream Queens and that stuff and the last girl and it was always had to be the last girl I love that do you know what I mean I do but it's a double edged sword funny enough I had a co- this oh, conversation okay. with my wife because you've got to think these movies were very exploitative towards women as so, well there was a lot of fannies and bush and tits um, and just girls getting their boobs out for, for very little reason other than the director or the producer felt that you know that would get more bums on seats it, it did though but then the the other side of that coin is women were then like you said they were empowered that the final girl you know mm. she would always outwit the bad guy mm. and usually my wife said to me she, what she likes about the final girl is usually they were a virgin and or a nerd you know they were yeah, always they the, the bad stuff yeah. and it's and it's even it's, more humili- humiliating for the for jason or whoever the baddie is because he's been outwitted by what everyone considers to be a nerdy virgin, you know. Good versus sh- evil. Yeah, it's great. It's like one end of the spectrum to the other. So mm. you're right. It is great that it's empowering, but I always think that it's, some of these movies were quite exploitative as well. And, you know, that was the way things were. Um, but but no, totally. And I, I love the notion of the final girl, you know. And I think Ginny is actually one of my favourite final girls of all time. Um, um, she's up there with... Um, uh, Nancy from Friday the th- uh, from Nightmare on Elm Street, and of course, you know uh, Jamie Lee Curtis Halloween. Um, uh, probably my favourite three final girls of all time. I absolutely love them. Okay. Ginny's awesome. Um, I do find this running through the woods stuff. It becomes a little bit a uh, boring. Um, it becomes a little bit oh, same old, same old to the point of like, are they just trying to stretch the length of the film a little bit? Um, well, it does go on a little bit, but then we get yeah. an amazing scene, which I've only ever really seen in The Phantasm, where she pees herself. Um, she's hiding under the bed, and um, a rat walks past, and she, she pees herself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and that, that's just like, just shows the, the vulnerability, the, the the human nature of this girl. You're like, man, she's so scared. She's wet herself, bless her. And she's hiding under the bed, and she thinks Jason's gone out of the room. But of course... When she climbs out from under the bed, he stood up on a high chair he next to her. Break, yeah, he breaks the fa- the chair's leg snaps. It's, a, it's comedy. The chair, he's and so heavy. Like, oh, and it just falls off and she manages to get away. It's like, how can we get her get away? He can break the chair leg. Oh, okay. She gets the chainsaw. Uh, she knocks him over and runs off. She goes into Jason. She runs for a while and she goes into Jason's cabin. And this is where I got like, boring now because like, it was running through woods, running through woods, running through woods. Yeah. Well, yeah, so speed forward until she gets to Jason's cabin. Um, she walks in. She obviously finds the shrine, which now has a big pile of corpses around it, as well as Pamela Voorhees' head on top of it. And Jason's coming in the room. She as thinks, you do. She's so quick-witted. She thinks, what can I do? Yeah, this is like, all of a sudden we get, we get into psychology terms. She's like, right, what do I do? What can I tap into? Ah, oh, his mother. That was a problem. I'll pretend. And it's like, whoa. <laughs> How did you think this so quickly? Desperate, man. Desperate. She's, she's the only that's, thing she can think of. I, I, I guarantee you, if a big fucking dude is chasing after me, I've run into a shack and his mum's head's there. I don't know his mum's head. It's just a fucking head of a woman. And this dude's about to run in there. At no point am I going, <laughs> I'm going to pretend that the, whatever that head, that's me. I'm going to put this jumper on. Jason. Oh, the jumper. Imagine how smelly that jumper oh, is. Oh, God, yeah, when she put it on. But like, I wouldn't think that. I'd be like going, where the where's the back door on getting out of the fuck as fast as I can because I'm not even going to fight that shit because I'm dying well she puts on the smelly sweater and Jason walks in the room and she goes Jason it's me your mother it's too quick stop she's so she's so good yeah N- kneel down kneel down for your mummy and then this is where um, Betsy Palmer came in to film some shots which they overlaid over the top of her sort of saying I'll always be there to look after you just do what you, do what I say Jason do what I say yeah. and he does start to kneel down you see his one eye poking out of his sack <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that sounds weird doesn't it um, uh, and he does start to kneel down and she raises her um, revealing what, or machete or whatever behind it is but, but sadly as she does that yes Jason spots his mum's head behind her and Mummy. thinks hang on a minute you're not my mum my mum's head's over there it's okay though because <clears throat> Paul just jumps in the door and he's there to Fucking, help. he's come back from the dead he Where had have you old, been? he's been like unconscious knocked out by Jason in the then living room then she hits machete in, uh, Jason in the neck with a machete he's like you're just no good yet Jason you really need to go back and do some training 
it's a slow mo and it's right through his shoulder into his neck um, um in, the, in the actual take of this uh the lady who played Ginny, she um actually uh chops chops into the the body uh the finger really badly and he had to go to hospital oh uh, um, yes um, when he went the... to a hospital we had to walk in with a machete prop going through him amazing and they were like oh my god sir please come this way and he's like no that's not the issue no apparently he went up to the the desk and said oh do you have parachute tomorrow i have a terrible headache <laughs> but that was shit if you're like an old lady that's in there like oh look at him it could be worse could be him well i read a story when tim burton was making that planet of the apes movie that not many people like um uh what's his name um michael clark duncan rest in peace big big huge michael clark duncan obviously plays a gorilla in that remake and he got injured or had a something wrong on the set and it took like six hours to get him out of that makeup so they just took him to hospital in that full gorilla suit and obviously the, the effects were stan winston in that movie so they're really good so he's gone into <laughs> gone into the hospital <laughs> in a full gorilla they said so they said everyone sees this gorilla walking up right speaking hi oh, it's me i've come in because you know michael clark duncan's got that deep voice as well from imagine a, from, being um, a nurse up there from a shawshank redemption yeah 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 got a green mile green, green mile. mile green mile yeah um a lot of these things must have happened but people are in full makeup and they have to go off and do stuff um well cutting backs so we're wrapping up the, at this end of this movie yeah, now. She, she's sitting on the bed traumatized as you would you know so they take well hang on they take off, take the bag off and we don't see the head the face initially we're like oh we didn't get to see it so they walk off uh, i've written a little note here i would have burnt the shack down to the ground i've written because they just walk off and leave jason's body on the ground yeah they cuddle on the bed they sit on the bed and they cuddle and they hear a noise downstairs and it's muffin the dog yay. yay don't get too happy though because as you're celebrating the dog's still alive slow motion jason with long red hair and a sloth from the goonies face yeah and a sackless showing his face he's got his sack out sackless. And, he, and he's coming in the window and he grabs Ginny through the window or does he <laughs> because she's then being seen loaded onto a, a stretcher, stretcher. Yeah. was that in her head i presume it's supposed to be yeah uh, it's a yes. bit of a copy of the first one's ending uh, yeah, um, yeah. and then we get the final shot zooming into Zoom. the mum's head now they did originally cut uh, obviously as you would they did give it a go with the eyes opening but obviously yeah. it didn't work so they just cut that bit out which i would have done the same it's no harm it to wouldn't do that. it wouldn't have worked um but it does the way they zoom in on it makes you always think are the eyes going to pop gonna are the eyes going to pop i thought at that point are they now going to do that i couldn't remember but they didn't no financially, that's the end uh, financially did 22 million um uh which you know there's enough for them to be able to go oh let's make another one let's they would have they would have, they would have greenlit three before this one was even wrapped i should imagine because three came out a year later you know to make a movie in a few months you've and got to kick things off three took 36 million and <sighs> remains the most profitable installment yeah it amazing knocked, it knocked et off the top billing Yes, I did hear that because ET was number ET one. had been there for a while, but it had been there for so long. And, and it, um, a movie is good to do it, but yeah, that was the one that knocked it off. Yeah, that's their um, claim to fame. And I, I think, um, what year did Poltergeist come out? Because Steven Spielberg's got a bit of an issue with Jason. I think. Hang on, let me see what it was. I think it was something to do with Poltergeist as well. Uh, oh yeah, that year. J- Jason because he was shooting Poltergeist and Poltergeist in the street at the same time yeah for some reason Jason beat Poltergeist and another reason I can't remember how and Spielberg was like damn it who is this Jason Voorhees guy um, Friday the 13th three days beating both my movies but um, there we go that's part two so um, look, I really really like this the first one actually is, is you know the first one's good but I feel the same about Halloween 2 as I do about this movie in that I actually would, given the choice, I'd watch the second one over the first one. I've seen Halloween 1 so many times. I always go back and watch Halloween 2 in the hospital these days anyway because I, I 
I prefer it. The I just like the, the the pace of it, and I feel the same about this one. I feel like the pacing on this second Friday movie is just a little bit better. I prefer the characters, and I like that Jason is the killer, not Pamela Voorhees. You couldn't have this movie without the first one. I would never take anything away from the first one, but I just slightly prefer this one to the, to the original. So it's definitely definitely a thumbs up from me. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a thumbs up for me. Um, I think this is stronger than part three, which we're going to get into. Um, I still, part one uh, is still my lead for this. Um, uh, yeah, I see what you're saying, but f- for whatever reason, when I watched the original Friday 13th, um, well, it's because the way they shoot it, they shoot it the whole POV because you don't notice the mum till the end either. So you can get away with that, but you just don't see the Jason. But in this one, you didn't see Jason's body and turn an hour into it. So they're almost alluding to that that way of filmmaking from the first one really uh, doing that just showing bits of his body so really that doesn't really bother me I still feel like it's Jason in essence you know yeah I know what in you spirit. mean uh, so it doesn't bother me it's people still getting fucking killed in the woods and I'm happy yeah and, and whether or not you, you agree or don't agree with the fact that there's a potentially a fake start and a fake end to this film mm. um, it kind of is the how the first three or four movies were really you know is it real is it not it doesn't matter just go into it you know what you're getting mm. you're going to get a bunch of teenagers sliced and diced by Jason Voorhees Slice it's what we dice. like yeah. the ice is going to break the ice is going to break um, yeah um, yes I uh, do enjoy. I, I, I like I say. I, I look forward to next year. Actually, I think once we get to four and five, I think we're going to be having a lot more fun. Mm-hmm, I feel mm-hmm. with the movies. Uh, and then when we get to like part eight and shit. <laughs> well, I just can't wait. Um, now, Bill Murray isn't here because he's actually in the woods. So we are going to now uh, take a break. Where you and I are going to drive out to the woods um, because. Bill's got a campfire and a tent set up, and we're going to go and do some campfire stories for World of the Strange Gav. Yeah, okay. Can we do um do some um you know uh, burn some marshmallows and yeah yeah some s'mores. s'mores yeah yeah. Bill's got everything set up. He said he's in the woods, ready to go. I know uh, we haven't got Wi-Fi connection. Or anything. I'm bringing um a few old porn magazines. Yeah, we'll leave those in a bag. Bit of reading. You know. <clears throat> oh, I thought we could just leave them for the next generation to find. I thought we could read um, them around the campfire. Yeah, I think Bill's already got a load of porn with him, though. But uh, <laughs> all right, great. So, all right, well, we'll take a break, and uh, you and I, you know, Bill's going to do his intro, and we'll, we'll when we're next beat, we'll be in the woods around the campfire. So uh, let's do it. Uh, yeah, I'll get the car, I'll get the car warmed up. All right, I'll go and get my bag packed. All right, let's go. Hi, welcome back to World of the Of the, of the strange. Well, this is strange because I am actually a bit chilly. I'm glad this fire is crackling away. It's nice, isn't it? I, it's. I like this. I like being out in the woods like this. Look up, look up there, Dan. See all the stars. I can see. I know. It's it's very clear sky. Isn't it? It's a UFO, and that might is be it? Bigfoot. So if a rock comes flying towards us, that's Bigfoot. No, that was just Bill throwing something. I don't was know what he's throwing. Bill? Right. Stop throwing things. Oh, he's just passed me a schmore. Thanks. Oh, yes. Get I'll get that. Yes, I will. Yep. Oh, have oh yeah. You. These are good. Oh, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Well, yeah, so we're here in the woods with Bill. Me, I you, and Bill. I still thought it weird when we signed the contract of Bill Murray to be in World of Strange that his contract was, even though it's a podcast, it's audible, uh, as in like audibly listened to uh, uh, his contract was like no speaking it's like how yeah, do people it, know it's him it's such a waste of money it's cost us so much money you can tell it's Bill him Murray just from wild descriptions of what he's doing I suppose don't but I just don't that. like the way he's managed to get away with this this not working but working he wants he's to here know every time it's sometimes we can't get rid of him he wants to know if he should get his wieners out for the barbecue no, and I love the fact that we've learned, learned this sort of Bill Murray sign language where yeah. he doesn't say anything, but we know exactly what we he's know. doing, and quite often it's to do with his penis. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Put it away, you're not putting that on the fire. Well, it's up to you. 
Uh, well, well, we're here to, you know, we're, there's a reason that we're here. You know, this is our summer special. We're reviewing two Jason films. But I thought what we could do is get get out, you know, for a few hours in the woods like we're doing. and The weenie roaster. S- sit around the campfire. Mm. And, um, and it's nice. There's owls. Oh, Bill, did you put that bag of porn in the b- bushes for the next generation of kids? Yeah, you did. Good, good. good. He's done it, Gav. Did He's you tie a knot on? Yeah. Yeah, because I was around again, so. Nice one. Thanks, hey, Bill. Brilliant. Um... Yeah, so I thought let's 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 tell some campfire tales. Yeah, I'm well up for this actually. I feel a bit warmer now. This fire's got a bit bigger now. It's quite good. Yeah, that's all right. Um, if I if I if I'm moving around, I'm just gonna put some stuff on it because it, it. Oh, what was that? What, I just heard that? something. Did you hear that? Oh, what what animals have they got out here? Foxes, bears. I don't know. There's bears. Uh, we've got a black bear. Uh, okay, Bigfoot. Uh, the odd oh, alien definitely heard something then but uh, uh, um, yeah well look we'll, we'll do a couple of classics these are only a paragraph or two long um, and then we'll get into a couple of other ones I'm not going to tell loads but I'm going to tell you know five or six very short stories okay so well, I'm just going to sit back chill out uh, listeners just chill out with us around the fire it's nice and warm oh, pull your um, oh, pull crazy, your sleeping bags over your legs all, let's all interlock our arms I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> no, Bill. Oh, Hang Lord. on, Bill's, Bill's just oh. asked if after this we want to all go skinny dipping. Well, maybe we'll see. Okay. We'll see. Okay. okay. Well, the first, the first one is a classic. You're going to know it by the title. It's called The Hook. Okay. Uh, yep. Yep. Uh, like uh, this is a. Uh, uh, I know what you did last summer territory. Yeah. Well, let, let's tell the story very briefly. A pair of attractive teens were parked at Makeout Point, or Lover's Lane, depending on your version of the story, which is an isolated spot on the edge of town, and the boyfriend switches on the radio for some sexy, sexy, romantic music. What, what was that, do you reckon? What was the song? Yeah. It was, um... Mm, boys to men I'll make love to you like you want me to oh. yeah uh, so they put that on and they start they start canoodling and just as things start getting hot and heavy they're interrupted by a breaking news story we interrupt this story to let you know that a, an escaped murderer has escaped from the nearby asylum he's armed he's dangerous and he's only got one arm at one hand <laughs> his right hand his is, arm is, but only has one arm he's got a hook on his right hand instead of his right hand so they get frightened you know the girlfriend says like, I think we should go home and he says no no let's stay here and have sex I'll lock all the car windows that he tries to kiss her again and she says look no means no uh, and I want to go home now and he says oh okay that old then chestnut. so they start driving back and he drives her home and when, when they get out of the car and he goes to give her a midnight kiss he realises that there's a hook dangling from the door handle of the car and they were do, really do, lucky do, to get away yeah. I like the fact it could be a one a one armed man who's well, only one arm could be armed I love that <laughs> it wasn't me it was the one armed man uh, Bill's giving that one a thumbs down you're not a fan of that one Bill no? All right. Well, I've got another classic for you then in that case, Bill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can sit next to me. Of course you can. Right. Um, this next one is called Don't Turn On The Light, Gav. Don't turn on the light. You'll know this one as well. Two college roommates are in a science class together, and it's the big midterm uh, exam in the morning. Marie says she wants to stay in bed and st- study, but Tara wants to go out and party with the cute guy from the lacrosse team. So she leaves Mary to her studies, or Marie to her studies. When she gets home very late that night, Marie's in bed and the lights are all off. So Tara just goes into her bed. She doesn't bother turning the lights on. She doesn't want to disturb her friend. In the morning, she wakes up, goes over to Marie, and tries to wake her up. Says, we've got to go now. We don't want to be late for our exam. Mm-hmm. She realises Marie is dead. <laughs> oh, and there's God. blood all over the bed. And on the wall above her, written in her blood, says... Aren't you glad you didn't turn on the light? Yeah, that's good. It's, it is definitely good, though, when you get, like, a, a 
a mark that the killer was there. Obviously, it was a dead body, but d- more than that, something personal, blood written on the thing. It, I find that stuff more scary because you're going into the actual mind of the killer because their mind had to think, oh, how do you spell what I'm about to write and write it? How do you spell? I don't know. No, it's very simple, but obviously you had to write it, so I had to at least think about it if a very smallest amount of thought. Um, but I, I think that's more per- personal things like that, I think, make killers that much more scarier. That happened in... Um, what movie was it? Was it Urban Legend or something? Where she thought they were having sex, but actually it was someone was killing. Yeah, it's urban legend. Yeah, urban legend. Yeah, it's it's, but, uh, it's a thing with Jiggy in it. Um, what's she called? Don't know. My, my sister. Oh, Danielle Harris. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Bill, Bill's given that kind of a middle of the road sort of mm, not bad. Okay, here's one then. You might not have heard Bill and Gav. All right, why has he moved over to sit next to me? Why? What? A minute ago, you're there. Are you going to move each time as a story? What? What does he's that even pouring, mean? He's pouring a bit of whiskey in your uh, hot chocolate there. Look. Oh, well, a hot toddy. But you know, I don't drink. Is he trying to get me drunk out here in the woods? I think he weird? is. I think he is. Um, mm. Okay, so the next one is called the clown statue Bill Murray's drunken wiener party the clown statue Gav you're not a fan of clowns are you I'm not a clown statue what so we're just going with like a, a statue in the woods of a clown well, let, so a babysitter was hired to watch two children overnight and she puts them to bed and the parents say when you uh, put the kids to bed they've been having nightmares so we just ask that you don't go back downstairs you stay up in in our bedroom and watch tv there's a tv in there and that way we know you're close to the kids because they might need you to come in and comfort them because they've been having nightmares so she put, so is she, is she, I assume she can sleep on their bed then in their bed is that what um, she can just lie if there it, at least she's yeah. there for the night so. she shouldn't be sleeping really she should be keeping an eye on them i suppose she sleep at some point if you stay she says for the night she's babysitting for the night maybe yeah well she settles the kids down and they they go to they go to sleep quite well and she gets into the kids the parents bedroom and she lies on the bed makes herself comfortable puts tv on and she's watching television then she realizes oh what is that in the corner of the room and it's a very a really big life-size clown statue Uh. yeah and she sort of thinks mum and dad's kinky sex object she doesn't like it so Finally, after about an hour, she's really not happy about it. There's something about it that really creeps her. So she calls up the dad, who's out, you know, at this social engagement, and she says to him, "Look, is it all right if I go downstairs?" And he's like, well, "No, no, no. I'd really like if you actually stay upstairs." And she said, "But uh, I just, I'm not. I'm feeling a bit creeped out in your room." And he said, well, "Why?" And she says, "Well, it's that clown statue in the corner of your room." And there's a pause, and he says, "Get the children." And leave the house now. We do not have a clown statue. Why would he say? Why would he jump to the conclusion? Get out the house now. We don't have a clown statue. Well, what, what would you think it was then, Cap? Why would he be like, get the children, wake them up, disturb their sleep, my pattern, get them in the fuck out of the house? Where am I going to go? They don't don't have... know. Just fucking What's get the clown out. statue doing there then? It's a, it's a statue. What do you think it's going to do? Bill, why are you laughing? This is a serious story. You're laughing as well. <coughs> You've got marshmallow Jesus. all over your chin now. I don't idiot. think that's marshmallow. Oh, God, Bill. Okay, well, here's a good one. The Green Ribbon. Not the Green Mile. Green Ribbon. A man... By, man. by, the, by, by the way, I didn't, I, thought, I didn't know that was the ending. I thought it was going to be more. No, that was it. <laughs> Get out of the house. <laughs> No, I just jumped Why? in Why there. Why not? I had to jump in. We don't have a clown statue. I've got to say, though... I, You're in the wrong house. I like that one the best so far. Okay. I think that's okay. all right. I don't know what, is it, what sort of statue is it. Why is it a statue? Why can't it just be a clown doll? Why is it a statue? Like cement, okay. concrete? It's life-size. It's, like, it's life-size c- concrete clown. Well, clearly, it's just an actual killer clown that's stood in the corner of the room watching her, maybe. I suppose, but I do like it. It's, it... it yeah, it is. I don't think it's creepy. I'll be like, it's a fucking statue. I say, no, it is creepy. And why have you got it in your bedroom? Is it a weird sex thing? If so, sh- I don't want. Well, do want to know. Cause I want to know how you do it. But I don't at the same time. 
So like they're in the middle of it, and he says to his wife, "Should we bring the the clown into the bed?" The clown in, the, and they lay down this concrete, and she just kind of rides it a bit, and he just goes Ugh, on the clown's oh. face. <laughs> on its nose. They put on a little whack, even though it's concrete. Yeah, it has got a little honky nose. But I don't know. I don't know. Maybe when when they're about to come, that's what he signals to her. <laughs> And then the flower squirts water. <laughs> but I like uh, this one so far. Okay, so the next one is called The Green Ribbon, okay? Yep. So a man marries his beloved, a beautiful young woman, who, ever since he's known her, she wears a green velvet ribbon around her neck. Okay. On their wedding night, he says to her, why don't you ever take the ribbon off? Yeah. And she says, if, you, if I do... Mm. you'll be sorry if I ever take this off you'll be sorry okay. and she goes to sleep and every night he says to her I love you you know I'm so glad I married you you're my true love but why why won't you take the green ribbon off and she says the same thing every night if you do I'll be you'll be sorry if I take it off you'll be sorry and he starts going a bit crazy over the years because he's of, about because of the ribbon He's like, why? What does she mean? Does that actually make him go crazy? It's like the smallest little thing, but it's just slowly. So one night... I was going to say, when she's asleep, I'll be like, when fuck, I'm getting that fucker off there. I'll be like two days into it, you know, fuck off, off under there. He, he takes his scissors out of her sewing box and he cuts through the ribbon. Oh, can he not just uh, like, do like a Velcro strap or something? No, like? no, no. And he cuts the ribbon off. Do you reckon, he, rib- do you reckon his, uh, his thought pattern was like he'd get a Velcro strap and put back on it so she wouldn't know? Hang on, let me get to the end. So he cuts cuts the ribbon with the scissors, and then he slides the the ribbon off of her. And as he slides it away, hmm. her head her head rolls off onto the floor with a sickening thud. Whoa, that's some strong ribbon. So that ribbon was keeping her head on, Kev. Wow, that's amazing. I quite like that one. It's kind of a bit of a good urban legend. Um, oh, I'm into the clown statue. You're into the clown statue. I'm into okay. the kinky uh, menage a trois clown statue. <laughs> I'm gonna come. <laughs> Bill, you played a clown, haven't you, in that one movie? You did, um, as you robbed a bank. Yeah. Yeah, you did. I know, I know, I saw it. It was good. You made a good claim. Um, okay, we'll do uh, The Hitchhiker, not The Hitchhiker movie that we all know. No. With Rutger Hur or the terrible remake. Um, with Sean Bean. Oh, God, that was awful. Remember that one? I'm not sure I've seen it. Oh, don't worry about it. Uh, so, this is The Vanishing Hitchhiker. It might be the most famous campfire story of all time. I doubt it, but let's let's go for it. A couple are driving late at night with a notice a girl hitchhiking. They pick her up. She thanks them profusely and says, can you take me to this address? This is my home. So they drive her home. They try and make polite conversation, but after a few minutes, she just falls silent. The driver says... Well, we've reached your, uh, you know, your home here. We're we're here, and they turn to the back seat, and she's gone. She's vanished without a trace. So they go and knock on the door mm-hmm. of the house that they were directed to, and an elderly couple opens the door and they say, "Oh, uh, we just picked up a girl." Um, and they give a description, and say, this is her daughter. And they, their mouths fall open. They say, you're describing our daughter who was killed in a car accident 20 years ago, just a few miles up the road. I like that because that's um, quite possibly based on uh, something, uh, an experience I reckon someone had. Probably, you know, slightly changed for story and effect. But I, I, I quite like that because that's quite a pleasant that's quite a nice thing because it's not it's not an evil thing no it's not no but still clown statue the the jizzy clown statue that's the one I like well I think you're going to like the name of this next one oh you got another one I thought that was the last one I think Bill's going to like the name of this next one as well it's called well how many more have you got because I don't like being disappointed I'm just going to do two more this one and one after great as long as I know and then I've got an expectation you know when the end's coming you like like to know when it's coming I like to know when when there's a coming well, this next one is called Doggy Lick. <laughs> Funny enough, 
Oh, God. I was what? No, well, no, I've been watching a program called Dave about a rapper. Oh, yeah. It's very yeah. funny. And there's this bit where <laughs> there's this one episode where they're held up and there's a storm and tornado in their tour bus. They're held up at this house in the deep south of America. And um, the old lady just comes into the room, sort of sits down, and she's watching TV and she's really like almost out of it. And they're sitting in there dining room and she doesn't know that they're just kind of chatting away quietly it's really late at night thunderstorm out the dog comes in and goes and they're like and the guy's like oh my god I can see her vagina and he's like what and like the old lady and the dog goes along and oh goes back to the name of this doggy lick and it was quite funny but quite gross at the same time well this story is about a girl who's afraid of the dark so every night her dog sleeps under her bed oh and when she starts having a nightmare or feels particularly afraid, she always puts her hand down and the dog licks her hand to reassure her, I'm here, it's okay. What's going to lick her instead? So one night she wakes up to hear a strange dripping sound. Ugh. She puts her hand down because she's a bit scared and the dog, you know, licks her hand and she thinks, oh, that's good. She goes back to sleep. That's fine. In the morning, she wakes up to find the body of her dog hanging in the middle of the room dripping blood oh. and on the wall someone has written humans can lick too uh. so it was a person under her bed licking her hand <coughs> yeah uh. I reckon hand licking is a thing which has been done I don't like the dog bit well I think we should uh, do something else with the dog in that story uh. <laughs> well the last one is called the peeling wallpaper. Oh. A young couple moves into an old, decrepit house that definitely needs a lot of work doing to it. The husband takes care of some of the construction, and the wife's job at one point is, I'll take down all the wallpaper so that we can repaper the whole house because they want to, you know, they want to put their stamp on it. It's their new place. It's a very boring and tedious task, as you can imagine. We've all stripped wallpaper. And she begins to find it very satisfying whenever she can peel off a big chunk all at once. And again, we know that feeling when you do a little bit and then a huge bit comes off, you know, like yeah. in the burbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she says it's like, pe she said to her husband, it's like peeling a sunburn. Oh, I don't like it when I have to peel my sunburn. No, no, that's, I don't like that, no. After a while, she discovers that there seems to be some writing <clears throat> under each corner of wallpaper. Yeah. And she thinks, that's strange. And it says, it's a date and a name. And she wonders what on earth this could mean. So she searches one of the, na the names and the dates on the internet. And it comes up as a missing person. So her and her husband contact the police. Mm -hmm. And say, look, we've been peeling the wallpaper of that. And under each piece of wallpaper in each corner, there's a date and a, date and a name. And it, they all seem to be missing persons. Uh, well, the detectives come over and they're looking around the house and talking to each other. So they're sort of sat having a cup of tea, the couple, and they overhear one of the detectives say to the other, yep, it's definitely human. And she says, well, sorry, what's human? And he says, ma'am, where is all the material that you've removed so far? Because it isn't wallpaper. It's human flesh. <laughs> <laughs> right what should we do with the bodies let's decorate the house with the flesh how hard would that have been how many bodies do you need how big's the room wow <laughs> <coughs> seriously <laughs> there's so many factors involved in this I like that one yeah. <laughs> it's silly the thing is these you know they're, they're all, always going to be quite silly aren't they um there's a few that will get under your skin, but you've you've heard versions of them so many times. You know, my favourite one, I think, out of all of these, is the lick, the hand lick one, because I think if you if you tell that right and you you pad it out with enough detail, the licking hand, the licking hand, and you got a good the way that you say the punchline is good, that will really make people go. Aah! Do you know what I mean? I like Honky the Clown though. You like the clown, yeah. You're not a fan of the green ribbon, the head falling off? Uh, it's all right. It's all right. All right. Well, there we go. There's a lot more of these. You know, you've got your Bloody Marys, your 
on all the other ones out there. But guys, I just thought for a bit of fun for this one, we could all sit around this camera. It's an excuse for Gav, me, and Bill Murray to sort of sit here and, and have some for, uh, And the thing is, now once we turn this recording off, guys, I know we're going to do Friday Friday, but we're going to do that back, obviously, back when we're inside. But we're just going to hang out now, and it's a shame you can't witness what's going to happen. <laughs> Not in a weird way. Um, that Bill, Bill, is that? Be some weird stories. Bill, is that one tent for the three of us? And what is that one like king size sleeping bag? That's what weird. We we could be like a, oh. a, a packed sausage roll. What do you mean? I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle of you and Gav. You're like a sausage bap. For Christ's sake! Right, <sighs> let's get. I I'm I'm up for going to bed. Uh, not with her, not with you both though. What? We haven't got much choice. I'm not staying out here with that weird noise I keep hearing. Right, come on then. Let's all go to bed. Uh, right, piss on the fire, put it out. Right, we'll see you guys in a bit because we're going to have to turn this off now because I can't, I can't concentrate on recording podcasts and making sure Bigfoot's not getting us. Right, I'm getting the flaps open, Bill. God's sake. He is impatient. Right, come on, no fault in either, Bill. Do that outside. Right, take right. us out of here. Let's go. That's all the time we've got for this week on World Strange. Next week, though, give me Ira. Hairless pets. Weird. Weekends are a good time to escape to the woods. Unless the weekend begins with Friday the 13th. Because 13 is an unlucky number. But out here, so are 1 through 12. Because these are Jason's woods. And nobody leaves them alive Friday the 13th part 3 in 3D Jason you can't fight him you can't stop him and now you can't even keep him on the screen Friday, the 13th, part 3, in 3D. Now, when it comes to killing in Jason's woods, Jason will come to you. Friday, the 13th, part 3, in 3D. A new dimension in terror. It will scare you. on it. Friday the 13th, part 3, a.k.a. Friday the 13th, 3D, from 1982. Dun, 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 dun. Jason Voorhees stalks a group of friends who've just arrived to spend the weekend at a cabin near Crystal Lake. Pretty much the synopsis of about 80% of the uh, Friday the 13th movies, I would say. Um, I've got a special place yeah. in my heart for this one. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's classic formula, you know, teenagers. Yeah, it has a lower rating than part two. Yeah, but it's classic teenagers. Uh, great final girl again. Chrissy is a great final girl in this one. Um, really annoying character that we've already discussed uh, in this one, Shelley. Um, we'll get into him in a minute. Well, we won't get into him, but we will. We'll get into his. <laughs> we'll get into his character. Uh, it's a different, different Jason in this one as well. We have got Richard Brooker as Jason, and this is the first time you really see. Jason is a big guy. He's too, he's too hench. Like I know, I know, like uh, uh, well, to be honest, Kane. I've met Kane. I've, you know, I've stood, stood and talked to Kane right face to face. I can still see the sort of build he is, and he isn't like mega big. He is big, but this guy seems way hench, way too much. Like I but, said, um, I don't feel they've got the Jason yet, but they do in part four. But um, 
what why this one in, is so endearing to me is because this was obviously as we discussed filmed 3d gimmick you know and it's very funny when you know that and you watch this and you see snakes yo-yos brooms and they, and they knew they were doing it so the thing was they they said in the making bit that it was a case of they weren't really uh, uh, concentrating on acting at the time. It's just concentrating on make sure whatever they've got it, thing they're doing is going towards the camera without actually hitting the camera. Acting goes out the window, and you can see that when you do it. Their concentrations like on the pole hitting or the yo-yo, and it's a bit like, oh god. I, I know, but <clears throat> I do really like it. There's even a 3D joint in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah, passes yeah. the joint to us, the viewer. And yeah. if you're in 3D, you'd be like, whoa, man. Um, you and I famously, as we've discussed a million times, have tried to watch this in 3D. We gave up about 20 minutes in because it was her. We had 3D glasses on over our glasses. Yeah. And they were those old school ones. And they were cutting into my nose. They it were was cutting painful. behind my ears. That's the thing. You need to take, just get the. Get and some I was getting a headache. Uh, yeah. And it just, yeah. it just didn't work, really. Um, I might do that, you know, just cut, let's cut the, uh, the arms off them. Because they've know, got a can, few pairs. And then, yeah, I was going to say, you can buy a bunch I've of got, those. On. I've got a skate video, which is in 3D. Are there any penises in it? What, no. I would say to you, what, what do you mean penises? But it is a skate video, and yeah. Oh yeah, I've been skating loads recently. Been loving it. I got a, like a wider board. I picked up off a randomly picked up off this dude that's selling it on Facebook. Um, really nice, fairly brand new setup. He picked up in America, but he's a stunt coordinator, and he'd just been working on the Indiana Jones movie and stuff like that. Really random. I was like, oh, must we'll take your details. But yeah, be careful. Wide board. Be careful that the Nazis don't come after that skateboard. You never know. Yeah, yeah it could be Hitler's skateboard. <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh so much. Sorry, <laughs> that joke wasn't good enough for that laugh. But you've got to laugh. <laughs> I, 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 I do. Yeah. Um, but I've been enjoying skating loads. It's been good. Indiana Jones and the Fuhrer skateboard. <laughs> That'd be brilliant. Well, let's get into this one. So, déjà vu. We start off with the end of the previous film. So we um, we get a recap of Ginny tricking uh jason they the original idea for this was actually like halloween 2 and it was being a mental hospital yes yes it was which had already been done with halloween 2 like you say yeah. um, um and i think another movie did that as well um, but uh the lady who came out to do it was Ginny again wasn't it for this or uh Ginny for the beginning part yeah yes. yeah she uh, uh decided that she didn't want to do that but since then she's regretted it, yes, she wish she had done that, and we would have had a totally different Friday the Thirteenth movie. Would that have actually completely t- derailed the 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 Friday the Thirteenth notion of the camp, the kids? Do you know what I mean? Because like, before Maybe. we did it, it might her decision might have completely changed that. Well, the other idea they had was again copying the Halloween franchises. They were actually going to do a different a story film. for that, every every part. That, Four, That's five, six, seven. Why with part two, I was quite happy they continued. But I guess if they're doing a formula from Halloween, you had Halloween one and Halloween two, which were a continuation at, in the hospital. So they were trying to t- do that. I'm so glad that this lady said no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, we get the recap of the uh, the previous one. Ginny, we see Ginny again. You know, tricking Jason, killing Jason, but it's edited so that it looks like he crawls away. Um, and then we just, just zoom in on the mum's head and and then we get the new funky theme tune kick in. Disco is not dead, my friend. This theme tune is something special if, to me. If the Studio 64... No, was it Studio 64? Studio 54? 54. 54. Uh, I can imagine Jason in a sequined suit just fucking pulling out the it's, it's funky it's great it's, it's, uh, have you ever heard the uh, Jaws disco yes that's a great one yep um, it's all wild wild and shit um, the, th- the credits are shamelessly 3D 
firing into the screen at you with streaks of red behind them, like the beginning of a Superman movie or something. It's it's insane. And straight away, you can picture yourself sat in the cinema with the glasses on and some popcorn with your buddies. Like, yeah, man, we're going to get hit in the face with all sorts of shit. This is great. Yeah, at this point, though, I think if you're going back to now, Friday the 13th movie, you do know there's going to be a guy called Jason who's a killer. And so they have got that formula, even if they haven't actually perfected it. Uh, yeah, part four is where they do. Um, I still like that. And that, like you would be getting the fans at this point going like, we kind of know what we're after, like you said. So they're like, yeah, throwing popcorn and everyone getting all ruckus and shit and just having a good time. American audiences, I don't know if Canadian audiences, uh, American audiences, uh, from my experience, is like the only experience I could do is like in England is um, film festivals where uh, the whole crowd get together in unison and are cheering and... Uh, uh, booing or you know uh, an American when I've watched movies in American cinemas it's so cool like, the interaction everybody's like everybody's involved it's kind of it's kind of I've cool. had that I've had that experience in the UK only a couple of times one of them was with um, Avengers Endgame right. um, the audience was just erupting at certain parts of that mm. um, and clapping when the end credits came on okay. and that, you know that was that's uh, real fanboys there it's funny because well it was just it's just the everyone was so entertained with it uh it's you funny because england don't do it and uh, what i was con- considering what i was just saying actually i'm um, since i've been at friday first past a few times few past yeah three or four times i haven't actually heard that whole sort of thing but the crowd used to really get into it well a friend of mine said to in a whatsapp group the other day things that annoyed her and she said oh, another thing that annoys me is people that clap when the credits come on on a film and i said i do what? that you're just saying you're just saying oh thanks man i appreciate it you know like that's what uh, you're i saying, don't do like, it with every film but if 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 it's like if you got to put uh, your often when oh, I get, yeah quite yeah. often if i see like a star wars movie in the cinema you'll usually get people clap yeah and i'll just join in as well you know it's, and it's happened it, with a couple of marvel movies it's because we're fucking english though we do get a fright face everyone they do generally clap for the end of the yeah. film pretty much because most time it's Directors on there as well. I said this year, right a strike in that. I don't think there's gonna be that many filmmakers there. I'm there to watch um, Joe Lynch's um, H.P. Lovecraft inspired film uh, on opening. That's the opening film, uh, A Suitable Flesh. Uh, mm-hmm. he, I, I, funny enough, I um, had a very brief message with him, and um, he said it's. Uh, I said I'm not really into body horror, and he's like, it's not really. It's more erotic, and um, or something. And he said it's um, like a sequel to Reanimator, kind of love lettery sequel. Oh, sexy! Yeah, yeah. and he's just got into HP Lovecraft Film Festival, where we've had obviously Dead Bolt films play, so that's quite cool too. Nice. Mm. Well, let's bring it back to reality. Well, yes. there goes gravity. Well, there goes gravity. Let's well, get on to what we're talking about. Um, so we've got the credits out of the way, and we cut to. A couple called Harold and Edna, who run a shop. Now, this is an odd couple. She must be, t- what, 25? <laughs> 26, she's got rollers in her hair, and it's just like, yeah. you could have cast a little bit older. She's really out of place. And her husband... Um, Har- Harold. It, it, just a totally wrong mix yeah. couple here. Well, they... Um you know, it's the evening time and the news is on and the news is talking about local murders uh, and how the, a girl called Ginny is the only survivor so far. And there's been bodies left, right and centre, all just dismembered. Uh, they, funny yeah. enough, they say with an axe. Now, which he never killed anybody with an axe, but whatever. It but, sounds good. Yeah, but they probably haven't had fucking done autopsies yet, so they're probably just assuming it could be an axe. But, you know, it gets across uh, uh, the scare tactic for the, that lady. And she she is dressed like uh, uh, she's like in her 40s, but in her 40s in 1950 uh, uh, or something. <laughs> she, she's dressed like she's 90. <laughs> yeah, it's um, just weird. She's hanging up the laundry in 3D because we get the pole coming into the camera with pants hanging on it. You know, it's all... And again, it's really <coughs> funny how we get, like... I know this is just a, co- uh, a coincidence, a quinky dink, but, like, you get that bit in Halloween, uh, Halloween 4, where Michael comes back and he stands at the, the washing lines. Yeah. And it's just funny, you get these different bits where Halloween and Friday the 13th, this whole series, if you go through them all, just little bits where they interchange across. You're like, that's very much like Halloween, da-da-da, but they're different times when they came out. But, you know, I guess there's only so many ideas you could do for things. 
whilst Edna is hanging out laundry, she thinks she's seen somebody outside. And she thinks, oh, maybe it was Harold. I'll go and see what he's up to. Now, they own a shop. And, he's, uh, he's just the worst. Well, first of all, he feeds his goldfish, and then he eats some of the fish food. And he says, oh, it's not bad, this. Then he reads it, and he says, contains fly eggs. Fly eggs? Oh, it spits out. It spits well, out. Well, he's got his rabbit. Then he spots his rabbit. Oh, has... if she finds you in the fruit and veg section, she'll skin you alive. Why is the rabbit crawled up into the vegetable section? It's, it's not in the hygienic, shop? no. Um, and he picks her up, then he wanders around, just gets some orange juice, drinks that, puts it back. He gets then he peanuts. takes a couple of peanuts out and then some gherkins out of a bowl. And then, <laughs> and she, and then, then, then a donut. Starts, then a donut. And then he, she what, so if I him. buy a four pack of donuts from their shop, I'm, I'm going to get three, three in here. But she takes it from him, puts it back in a pack. Luckily, he takes it out again to eat it when she's gone and curses her. But that would have been rubbish to get three and a half donuts. In she says pack. to him, You've been warned about your cholesterol. Come she, on. She, she's like, for legit saying, like, Doctor says, I don't know, I'm trying to help you out here. It's a bit like you're just a weird couple. What are you getting from this guy? I don't get it. She says to him, take that filthy thing back to its cage. So he gets the rabbit and he carries it back to the barn. He goes in the barn and he finds all the other rabbits in the barn have been and, killed. And this has nothing to do with Jason whatsoever. No. It's, it's a, a chance for a 3D snake to fly in the face of the camera. That's the reason you've done it there. 3D snake, that's why. But also, then, this makes him shit his pants because he... <laughs> He runs past Edna into the outhouse yep. and just unload uh, at my mark. <laughs> at my mark, unleash hell. As uh, he unloads, he unloads hell into that can, um, and he's in there, sort of oh, letting rip. And he hears someone in. Oh, Jack there. Daniels. He thinks. Oh, did I just see the cur- Did I see the curtain move? What is it? Friday Thirteenth moves and shit. And I was just thinking, ooh, baby, baby, ooh, baby. 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 Those damn enchiladas, man. Those damn enchiladas. One of my favourite characters. I just find it so romantic that they're both just doing a lovely sing song while he's doing a shit. Ooh, Ooh, baby. baby. Ooh, Ooh, baby. baby. At what point they must be in that honeymoon phase, you know? (sighs) There's some great couples throughout this franchise. Another couple I really like, I think, is in part six, where she's like... We're going to have sex while this song plays, and you're not allowed to come until the end of it, and it's a nine-minute song. <laughs> and, and about two minutes into it, he comes. I mean, of course. We've got the stoner couple in this. Oh, yeah, we'll get to them. Chong. Chuck and Chuck and Chili, they're called. Cheech and Chong. Yeah, they're called basically. Because Chuck, Chuck he looks like Chong in this. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so we get to... Uh, Harold goes up to investigate what's behind the curtain. A cleaver flies out in 3D, of course, into his chest. See, this this here, um, I was happy later on, but for the beginning of this film, the effects, I was just like, this is getting a nil point. (laughs) Father of the 13th, part 3, nil point. And then a a rat crawls at the camera, which scares Edna. Because quite Uh, a lot of these kills from getting going, there's like no effects at all. An axe just going into the body is just not. Don't give me that. We we need flesh. We need like cuttage. And she gets a spike in the back of her head that comes out of her mouth, and that is her dead as well. Cut to three D baseball bat (laughs) right in the camera. Jesus, and it's a group of kids. And this is where we meet Shelley. Andy, Debbie, Chrissy. I've, I've written in bracket. I hate Shelley in really cap- big capital letters. Um, Shelley is. We've seen this character in other movies. He's into. He's a bit like the Corey Feldman character a bit later on. Actually, he's into masks and pra- practical jokes. Yeah. Special effects. You know, he's, he's potentially. You know, a Sam, Win- a Stan Winston, or somebody in the making. You know, if he, t- if he takes the right path, he's really into all this kind of stuff. But he's also a bit of a nerd and an outsider. Yep. Because he, he considers himself to be fat and ugly. Uh, he talks about that all the time. You know, it's like a defense mechanism. Well, they're they're all there, and they go and pick up Vera, the other girl, and Vera um, is apparently Shelley's date. They've got a pretty nice fan pickup van. So they say, oh, hi, Vera. And she says, hi. 
which one of these is my date? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Shelley says, I'm sorry, it's me. So he's really you know, beating himself up about it. Oh, he's a dick. I hate him. Um, oh, what's up? It's mean he's got a low self, uh, self-esteem or like lack no. of confidence and stuff. Like, I don't care. Uh, I, honestly, Frank most people I care about. so much worse than this. Yeah, oh, God, Franklin is worse. Don't get me wrong. But oh, okay. I'd quite happily put Shelley and Franklin in a car and push it over a cliff. Celebrity death match. So they look around and their van is, seems to be on fire, Gav. Yeah. What's all this smoke coming out of the van? Oh, it's Chuck and his girlfriend, Chili, and they are smoking a bong. In they, the van. They're getting stoned. They're laughing. They're having a good time. They're, they're oh, look at us. Here, here's a 3D joint being passed around. They're driving along. Right. It's so funny that cannabis is still, like, so, like, say, in England, illegal and stuff like that, where a lot of other places... But you never had, like, even in Simpsons, like, Homer smokes weed. You never had Homer, oh, Homer in this episode jacks up on heroin. Like, this movie wouldn't jump in the back and, oh, it's okay, we're just jacking up on heroin and laughing and stuff. This is just smoking weed and stuff. It's just... Slightly more socially acceptable. I know, I know. It's just, you know, it's funny. So the cops uh, pull on the red lights behind them. I know, and they're like, oh shit, everybody start eating the weed. Oh god. And they pull over, but the cops go straight past them. Yeah, they didn't want them. They just wanted them to, you know, go past. One of the girls says, I can't smoke or eat the weed, I'm pregnant. So she just keeps mentioning that she's pregnant. But we don't really hear much more about it after no. this. No, because... She says uh, it a couple of times at the beginning, but... It, yeah, is, is she the final girl? Uh, no, no, it's not Chrissy. So, so she's pregnant and she dies. So Jason could... That's pretty dark, but it it's, isn't mentioned anymore. Because I, no. I remember it was on there and I was like, well, I'm not going to note this yet because obviously this is going to come into like a story or a bit more talking or, uh, you know, and I'll, I'll start noting it as we get into it. So, but yeah, you're right. I think she says it in a later scene, and then that's, that's she does, as much as the girl, I can she's remember. She's the girl, I think. Yeah, uh, it's really weird. Um, but yeah, the cops go past them, and they find a, an obstacle on the road. Well, before that, there's, it's quite interesting. Those cops are actually on their way to Harold and Edna's shop, and we do see the cops yes. uh, um, get uh, there, and they're wheeling the bodies out. Yeah, body bags. So it, it ties in nicely to to the opening bit. Um, yes, the kids see a man lying in the road. And his name is Abel, crazy old Abel. Yeah, unfortunately, old uh, Ralph has passed away. Yeah, he got throttled by Jason in the last one. So this must be his crazy brother, Abel. <laughs> um, and he's lying in the road. I and think he like, passed away in real life as well. Is he dead? Is he all right? And then they, they, they sort of wake him up. And he starts going, I found pieces of them. Yeah, there's fingers and a toe. Like, oh. oh, my God, is that an eyeball? And he's, he's got a human eyeball, I think. He does and he's have a human so eyeball. Then, he does, at them. then they, they quickly get in the van and leave him. And um, uh, he, he, for the 3D camera, he lets everybody in the audience have an f- eyeball in their face. Now, Gav. In their eyes, I suppose. If we if we were going on a camping trip with, with a couple of friends and some girls, so we're all on our way there, and we'd come across a crazy man who happened to be holding a real human eyeball, that would probably come up a couple of times during our camping trip, right? Oh, These guys yeah. just crack on like it never even happened. It, I would be like, you know, what do we think? Is that a, uh, a, a goat's eyeball or a pig's eyeball? A goat. Well, you know, it's got to be, uh, we're hoping it's not a human one, so we're just going to go with whatever, which is big enough. Yeah. Well, they drive off anyway, and they arrive at the camp, and uh, Chrissy, Chrissy is our final girl, very beautiful, another one of my favourite final girls of all time, and she, similarly to part two, she has a boyfriend, secret boyfriend, Rick, who runs the camp, and always, you know, and... I know it seems to be a uh, a trending thing here. Now they were they were a couple last year, and then they went their separate ways. And he's really trying to get back into her good books, and also trying to get back into her underwear. And she's a bit unsure of it. She says, "I, I need some time. I need some time." You know, but she keeps giving him little little teases of it. So he's probably going to get get her into bed at some point. Um, yeah. But she shows everyone to their rooms. And uh, 
you know, she shows them around and then they say, oh, hey, you've got hay in a barn. She says, look, my parents are really rich and every year they're like, they say they're going to buy a racehorse. So they buy all the hay and then they don't buy the racehorse. So we've got all this hay every year. It's a really weird fucking thing. And it eases okay. there still, like, sort of go, oh, okay, cool, just put work out. So, what do you do with all this hay? It's just. It's so just, she gets she gets rich. Is this like a rich, the is this a rich the person thing? Maybe, I guess. Oh, look, just for a laugh, just get some hay. Honey, order some more hay for the barn. It'll be, be a laugh. I think some of this stuff was written once they got the location because they would have seen that barn with the rope and, and they, they just threw the whatever in without because, any more and, and it does lead to a cute moment now where he's pulling up what he thinks is the hay bale and he's saying, you know, I, I really hope we, we can work things out because I really like you. Gosh, this bale of hay is really heavy. And he looks up and it's her on the rope. Sitting on it. And uh, he let he let he <laughs> lets her go. And she goes crashing, yeah. crashing down to the ground. Um, and then they hear a scream. Shelley, they go, they are running around. Oh my god, what, what is it? Is it Shelley? Where's Shelley? I can't find Shelley. And oh my god, Shelley's in a wardrobe. He comes falling out of a wardrobe with an axe in his head. <laughs> I put here. I hate him. <laughs> you love him because. This is a joke. It is a e- practical joke. He's a little joker. And everyone's angry with him. What the, for God's sake, Shelley, why do you do these things? And he says, I don't have a choice. It's just what I do. Like in the van, when she says to him... It sounds really yep. creepy the way he does it. She says to him in the van, when they're on the way there, what have you got in this box that you're holding on to so tightly? And he goes, my whole world. And she says, well, what? it can't be much of a world if it's in a little box, like, what, like what? And he says, I'll show you. He says, stick around. I'll show you sometimes. Like, you are a psycho killer, my friend. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Qu'est-ce que c'est? Psycho killer. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Oh, okay. Well done. Well done. Well done. You, you got me there. So, everyone's crossed with Shelley. We don't like him. I hate him. Vera decides she's going to drive to town in her Volkswagen bug. So again, we've got a Volkswagen Beetle. Uh, Shelly's like, look, can I come with you? Because everybody thinks I'm a dick here. And they were supposed to be set up as a couple. Um, But Vera actually does start to think there's more to Shelly than just this practical jokes and this geek. God knows why, but she does. So they drive to town. They go into the shop and the background music for the the shop. Uh, as you know, you go into a shop and it's got background music. And you, you've got though in this Disco Friday the Thirteenth theme tune <laughs> just <laughs> playing. <laughs> it's just like that's what's playing on the, the on the tunnel a bit, yeah. Right. And he's, she says, "Oh, I haven't got any money, Shelley." And he's like, oh, "Here's my wallet." And he throws it to her. She drops it, and of course, this is where we get to meet. That's a three D moment. That took him loads and loads of takes, by the way. Yeah, to throw that wallet right in the camera. the camera. It's like, really? And we meet our team now. Ali, the bikers. Fo- Fox, and Loco. Yeah. They are the three bikers dressed in leather. Yeah. And they fuck with the kids a little bit. They pretend they're going to steal the wallet. Um, they don't in the end. They're quite well cast. They are. I really, really like Ali, the big black guy. Yeah, I love I'm not Fox. sure about her so much. I like her. She reminds me a bit of Pam Greer. Yeah. Um, and Loco, I think they're, all three of them are really good. They're really uh, I'm menacing. I'm them now, yeah. Like they're really picture. menacing, you know. There's something about them. Yeah, they do feel, quite good, yeah. I feel like I've seen them in other movies. Like, they're but, really good. But, uh, yeah, well, their demise isn't really very exciting, but we'll get to it. Well, they um, they leave them alone in the end, and they, they walk out of the shop, and they're a bit shaken up. Uh and what does Shelley go and do? Well, Shelley says, oh, I wish the, I wish I was strong enough to do something about that. She's like, well, look, it's fine. We're all good. Don't worry about it. Now. Let's just go back to, to the camp. So he reverses his car straight into their bike. So basically he does do something about it, but yeah, it's the wrong thing to do. Um, so he then starts driving and Ali has got a big metal chain around his fist and he stops the car in the road, puts his hand out like the Terminator and then he just smashes the window. Shelley drives off scared but then he gets a little sudden burst of energy and, and strength and courage and he does a U-turn, comes back, 
drives straight at Ali and runs over the bike. Yeah, I don't know where this wow. came from. Wow, you fucked up, mate, because I would not want to mess with these three. And you've just run over their bike. And as he drives off, you can hear Ali going, you son of a bitch, you're going to pay for this. I'm going to come back. You're going to find me. I'm going to find you. I'm going to kill you. And it's not Ooh. really going to be that hard to find them. No, they can't have got very far in it. And they Plus, do find the them easily. Windows. Yeah, and this is a so what? Yeah, it's not a good move from Chevy. Well, they get back. They get back. Um, and we get the 3D yo-yo. Yeah. Right in your face. And that's, that's Andy playing with the yo-yo. <clears throat> and Debbie lying underneath it. I think Debbie is the um, the one who said she was pregnant, but I don't know if she actually is. And the car pulls up with the broken windows. And uh, Cheech and Chong are like, what the fuck happened to my car? And they're like, oh, we got into a bit of a scrap with a, a biker gang. Don't worry about it. And everyone's like, what? But obviously, like, you fucked up this guy's car. Say sorry, at least. Another yeah. reason why he's a prick. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like him very much. I know you don't. Uh, where are we at then? Oh, yes. They've been, they've been infiltrated by the biker gang. So we're led to believe it could be Jason stalking them, but it's actually Loco. And Loco and Ali are stealing their gasoline from their van. There's this bit when he approaches, comes out, and the first thing that he does is woof, and does like a woof type sound for a sort of signal. Something something about him doing that just is quite creepy. Or I don't know, it's a bit rough around the edges or something. I, don't, I know he's saying rough anyway, or whatever he's saying, what, woof. Or, it's just the way it's he like does it. it. It's like... Hills have eyes, isn't it? It's a bit hills have eyes. Bit, yeah, a bit barbarian or something. It's a bit, it's a bit raw. I don't know. I like it. Yeah, um, it, it's it's perfect for them as their characters. Uh, so they they steal their gasoline, and Fox says, "I'm going to go and have a look in the barn." She doesn't know that Jason is behind her. Now the clever thing in this, obviously, is Jason doesn't have the sack anymore, no. so he's always blocked by an object or a door or something, uh, a piece of prop. Um, so you don't ever see his face. In fact, you don't really really see his full body much. You see an arm or leg or a bit of his torso. Um, and it's not until he gets the hockey mask, really, like, so that we see him really sort of stood there in his, in his glory. And he's, he's massive, like you said, Gav. He's absolutely massive. So he follows her into the bomb, and she climbs up into the ceiling. Um, she swings on the rope. Ha, ah, this is great. <laughs> and it's quite a nice scene, this, actually, because... Um, Loco looks back up and suddenly she's just not on the hay bale anymore. Yeah. And he thinks, well, that's weird. I'll go and have a look. Good, a little bit of suspense. Now, how did they do this shot, this death shot of her? What, of the pitchfork in her? Yeah, because she's got a pitchfork straight through the neck and yeah. she looks like she's suspended with nothing underneath her. Again, I've got to say, though, uh, just like the last kill was just off or just a, a, a knit needle going through the back of their head where we didn't really see it terrible it's just like, it's not terrible effect but i mean it's just poor we want to see stuff this again didn't even see the kill just a pitchfork in her um i don't know she's probably just up on a what do you see a completely hanging do you yeah you see her feet aren't touching the ground she's probably got a harness on now talking of the, the death scenes this film is very heavily cut the mpaa were really um they, this would have not got a rating if it hadn't if they hadn't have trimmed it. Yeah. But apparently, the uncut version of this film, the only country ever to release it, if you can find the Dutch VHS of this, that is the only fully uncut version of Friday the Thirteenth. Not on YouTube 3. or anything. Nowhere. Can't find it anywhere. It what, might be what, on YouTube. Might bits what, of it might be. What's the? What did they cut then? They cut a lot of the the, the, the death scenes and the blood. Oh, well, that might be, uh, uh, you know, it might not be the effects. I, I won't blame the effects team then for the, the lack the, of effects. No, the MPAA were really, really... Uh, this was 982, so we, we were, at the, in we were at the height of the video nasty stuff going on right here. Okay. And people were, at this point in 82, people were, were concerned that teenagers were all going to turn into psycho killers because they watched these movies. So they, they snipped a lot of it out, or a bit of it. So anyway, she's dead. 
and obviously Loco then gets killed as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah again, it's just like like the way you're just saying, and he gets killed as well because it's not even that elaborate. He, he gets stabbed by a pitchfork, but yeah. it's like over close. It's been like, oh come on, guys. I thought it was just budget reasons. Ali goes into the barn to just find out where his friends are, and Loco's body falls on him from above. Jason and him have a bit of a fight, Jason and Ali, and they sort of, um, obviously he loses, and Jason clubs him to death. And again, you don't see it. You off see screen, him clubbing him off screen. A, which is just, so far, <clears throat> this is the worst film of deaths so far. Mm. Yeah, it, there, is a, changes, there is a bit though. coming up. It does yeah, change, but, really. And then you get another effect after that. It's so weird. It's almost that, like... But that's because they were only allowed a certain amount of very gory stuff. But it's a shame, because I've got the uncut original. It, say, it says on there, uncut. Uh, but these ones, no. I just assumed they were, but maybe not, I guess. So, very boring scene of Rick and Chrissy talking about setting up the camp, so talking about their relationship and how they're going to move forward. Um, Shelley's juggling. Oh, Andy and Shelley have a juggling contest. Um, Ch- Chuck and Chili are obviously stoned and passed out on the sofa. <laughs> and um, they say, don't break our concentration. And obviously Andy's concentration is broken because his chick says... I'll be upstairs naked waiting for you. And he just drops his balls and says, you win. Yeah. Uh, dropping his balls. I'll do it. I'll do it. Shelley now starts really oh. staring at Vera. She says something to him. Um, uh, when she says a moment ago to the dude who just drops his juggling ball, she says something to him, but she, it, I think that she could have been more like, you know, come upstairs and I could, juggle your balls or something I thought they could have played on that level <laughs> I think she says yeah, there is something but she, I think she says a, a I think good thing she says something along the lines of I can think of something better you can do with your hands if you follow that's me it. upstairs and, and I was so like, he, that's he, just, wasted. he just he just throws his balls down and it, heads on it up. is wasted it is wasted I, you know come upstairs and juggle your balls or can that's I, what you can, I, can I see you upstairs juggling your ball? Show me your juggling ball juggling upstairs. I don't know. Better than that. More poetic than that with your ball juggling. Brilliant. Well, Shelley carries on juggling, but he stares at Vera. He's really staring at her. I see. He speaks this. I'm spitting all over the place here. I have been in a situation as a, as a big glassed, curly haired nerd in in my in my teenage youth. <laughs> no, actually, no. As soon as I started shaving the head, I was all shaved head for a long time. I still had big glasses. I still that a picture. fucking nerd. That picture of you on your mum's fridge. I, whenever I go around to mum's and see that picture of Which you. Which one's that? The one where you've got a massive afro <laughs> and the thickest rimmed glasses. It's from like, probably like 89. I don't know. 88, 89, I would say. It is just great stuff. And I always laugh at it and your mum always goes, oh, that was my gav. And I always look at it and think, yep, that was. Hello. There he is. Cheeky chap. Uh, but yeah coming from that perspective I, I didn't have any luck with ladies so it was so hard especially when you don't know if someone's been nice or they're like oh I'm attracted especially when you're a young boy you have no idea how to read a person I feel so bad for Shelley here she's like pretty much going oh yeah blah, blah, blah. and he's like oh great okay and she's like no not at all you're not getting any don't even think about it it's like what that's, that's just not fair well, Jason is lurking outside watching Shelley fail uh, <laughs> massively. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, uh, upstairs, Andy and um, Debbie are just trying to, trying to have sex in a hammock. I love the fact that Arthur, she's like, that was amazing. And she's, he's like, yeah, of course it was. It's me. She's like, no, it is a hammock. Yeah. You're always well, thinking, you know, sex in a hammock, is that, you can't really do much. It's missionary you can't start moving around because you're just going to fall out oh no you can't do doggy you'd fall over and break your neck oh no no you can't do anything like that you couldn't you do reverse cargo you, you couldn't can't do anything, anything like that. so you'll be laying down that's it but you can't even roll over to you know for and also like i'd get i think i'd get motion sickness if, if i was there 
pumping away uh, and the, and the, and everything was swinging left to right that would throw me off because I'm moving left to right while I'm trying to pump backwards and forwards I, I think I just end up being sick all over yeah, my yeah, it won't be good my lover I think a trampoline would be good <laughs> fucking hell <laughs> just saying with a clown statue I guess it might make a hole in it though the, uh, the trampoline <laughs> Be careful with about us making a small prick. Um, so yeah, yeah, you're right. She says, "Well, that was good." I don't know if it was me, you, or the hammock. And he says, "I think it was me." She says, "I think it was the hammock." And then she says, "Well, I'm going to go and have a shower now." And he says, "Oh, okay." She says, "You should try it sometime." And he's like, oh, "I think I smell." Probably. Yeah. Chrissy says to Rick, "What? What, what is this whole thing?" She says, "Look." This is like the Gremlins story, isn't it? This About is the, the flasher in the park. outside by the lake, a tree. She's just kind of there, and he comes over to her. Hey, how's it going? What's going on? And she says, look, there's something I need to tell you. I, I, I had to rewind this, because I was like, what, what is this? I, when I was, when I was it, younger... I was so confused, yep. I wanted to teach my parents a lesson. So I pretended to run away. No, because my mum slapped me, and it annoyed That's right. me, so I ran off. And I fell asleep in the woods, and when I woke up, there was a... It, deformed when is this maniac when was this set when when did this happen like it's so was, random there was a deformed maniac in the yeah. woods he started coming at me it, yeah and he chased me it's and proper then I creepy out. yeah and then i came to him i was in bed and my parents wouldn't tell, didn't say anything to me so did jason have sex with her it, this is my question as well does this mean potentially if this story is true does this mean that Jason might have children out there somewhere? Well, she'd know, actually, because she would have had a baby, so... It's so weird, though, that she, she's just like, I need to tell you about something, and he's just like, oh, okay, what is it? Is and it, she says, yeah. that's have why... Have you got I've a come... dick? What, what's the problem? She says, that's why I've come back here, to prove to myself that I'm strong and to get over this thing that happened. But it's like, well, hang on a minute. Yeah, How did yeah. you know it even happened? You woke up in your own bed. Your parents never mentioned it. Maybe it didn't happen. Yeah, you don't actually know. All of a sudden, the car battery dies. They've left the fucking car lights on. Why? He's just like, yeah, this happens all the time. Why? Why does it happen all the time? Turn your engine off. Like, what are you doing? He says to her, I guess we'll have to walk back. All right, I guess we fucking will. Great. Let's walk through the woods at night, dark. Yeah. Chuck... S- outhouse ooh, ooh baby ooh baby goes for a shit they love it these couples don't they it's Friday 13 for shitting in outhouses <laughs> and uh he, he thinks while well, I'm here actually this I'm going to smoke, gonna smoke this joint while I, I'm sat here I love this, this shit. He, he, he smokes yeah, he smokes a joint and he's just like all of a sudden his toilet rocks back and forwards like it's a jackass prank and he's like, whoa, this is some good shit, man. But really, Jason Voorhees has walked by. He's not that quick anyway, so he's probably seen him go in there and take shit. Maybe not. Don't, he's, might, I don't know how long he's been in there, but he might have done. So he's like, wandered over to the toilet, shaked it, and then walked off. Why did Jason shake a toilet and walk off? Oh, I'm going to scare him and walk off. Well, then he thinks, well, this could be Shelley. But, so he look, opens up the door, but he sees Jason just dart into a house. So literally, Jason came along, shook the toilet, and carried on walking. Maybe he's like the T-Rex. Like Bigfoot or something. He just, just walks past and it shakes. It was so weird. Boom, shake, shake, shake the room. It could have been Will Smith, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, but he would have got slapped. He and then he'd have cried. Right. Um... Yeah, he sees someone go in the barn, and he, he thinks he thinks it's probably Shelley. So he says to Chili, right, we need to get that piece of shit. He's, he's done too many practical jokes. Let's go get him. So they go into the barn, and there's no one there. That's weird. Well, yeah. meanwhile, while they're doing that, Vera's sat with her legs hanging off the end of the jetty and over the lake, and someone grabs her foot from the water. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, it's so scary. And she dropped Shelley's wallet. Why did she have Shelley's wallet? Because he threw it to her in the shop. She still got it in her pocket. Oh, okay. It's a good bit of sort of way of her to show that she's thinking about him. And she's thinking, you know what? Maybe I should give him a chance. But then 
then he ruins it because actually it's him that's climbed out of the water to scare her. He's got the hockey mask he on. He literally but, has no idea, does he? But Gav, I never had good, any idea. The thing that pains me the most is how much I hate Shelley. He's the reason that Jason wears a hockey mask. So you can't hate him. Also, when he's doing this practical joke, he's got a fully loaded harpoon gun. Yeah. As part of his practical joke. That's a little bit dangerous. Yeah, well, it is, it is the 80s. A little bit dangerous, to say best, the best, least. Best kill, though, with that gun. It's a very good kill. <laughs> um, and so it would have looked really good on 3D. He reveals it's him, and she says, Oh, why do you do this, Shelley? And he's like, I don't know. I don't have a choice. It's the only thing I know how to do. Yeah, she's I like, don't have a choice. That sounds so scary. Like, she's like, well, for God's sake, I dropped you a bloody wallet in the water. I'll have to go and get it now. <clears throat> and uh, meanwhile, Jason grabs the the mask and picks up the harpoon gun. And like you said, poof! Straight in her eye. Towards the camera, yeah. Nice shot in the eye there. Really random now. Like, next scene, we've got a shower scene. We get some boobs. This is really yeah. weird, because this whole movie beforehand... We've not really had any effects and no boobs, yeah. And it's almost like they're figuring out still. Like I said, they're figuring the formula. All of a sudden, it's like, oh, let's have some boobs. It's not, but it's not like really loads of boobs. It's just kind of just a bit of boob. It's quite subtle. It's just a lady having a shower, really. Essentially, it's not uh, putting across in a sexy type way at all, really. It's kind of weird. Um, I don't know if there's some point maybe a producer or a sexy producer's like. A demographic would probably be like, you know, get some boobs in there, get a few more people liking the film, or... <clears throat> I don't know. What's interesting what's about needed? this... What's interesting about this shower scene is that her boyfriend comes in doing a handstand. Now, my question to you is... Yeah, yeah. Did he put pants on, or is he just completely butt naked? Because if he's butt naked, everything's dangling up towards his stomach. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sure he's wearing flesh-coloured pants. This is my favourite kill. This is this this really does stand out. Um, I remember one night watching this one and not remembering his kill, and then just being like, "Whoa, that's so good!" And they um, uh, he's walking on his hands, and they made him walk on a uh, clear floor so they got the yeah. camera underneath going upwards really quite inventive considering earlier on it was fucking poor as shit you know no inventiveness at all now we've changed totally it's really weird um and he chops down like in um <clears throat> bone tomahawk yeah through the uh the person but we see sort of collapse to the floor but we don't that and then it cuts because i think it was cut there because it was a bit too graphic yeah, because when he when Machete hits him, he kind of collapses to the to the see through floor that we're looking up at. It's awful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a really good kill. It's really, really good. good. Uh, she's in, she's on the toilet reading Fangoria. Oh no, she, that's not a toilet in bed, isn't she? She's reading a Tom Savini article, all about Tom Savini's special makeup effects. It's Funny. like wow, that's great that she's doing that. Um, uh, and, look, looks up to because of dripping blood on her. Looks up to a picture I sent you saying, "Do you have this in your copy?" And you're like, "She yeah. says, she says good." She says, "Where's this coming from?" <coughs> um, above her is her boyfriend. <laughs> his body is split in two, and yeah, his, it looks the blood is really, pouring out all over him. It looks like whoa, that is really full on. Consider yeah, that shot. That's when you pause so that much, shot, that's so yeah. When I sent to you, that's so much full on compared to earlier. It's a complete different movie almost. It's really graphic. It reminds me a bit of. Bear with me here. It reminds me a bit of Dead Man's Shoes with the suitcase, like the way the body is all ram- rammed into a small space, hmm. you know, and, and it's all sort of misshapen. It's great. Jason's so strong that he not only did he cut this guy in half, he then rammed him up into the rafters above the bed. Uh, but yeah, it's just it's horrible. Uh, segue very quickly. I w- watched a movie the other day uh, called Bull. I didn't really like the ending. It kind of annoyed me. Uh, but Bull is in B-U-L-L-L and it's the main dude from um, Kill List <coughs> and uh, oh, yeah. he's basically on a revenge so it's basically him doing the Dead Man's Shoes oh nice um, it's uh, one ninety nine on Amazon to rent at the moment oh cool. it's, coming, it's coming on Netflix in a couple of weeks I think I'll, I'll put that on my list it, it, the ending kind of annoyed me but yeah <coughs> well 
Meanwhile, she, she's uh, she's spiked. I watched does that. She spiked up through the chest, and the lights go out. That's right. She's dead. So Chuck is making popcorn downstairs. Yeah, you're trying to catch uh, it all in his mouth. Really hot popcorn. It's not a good idea. The lights go out. Yeah. So he goes down to the basement to try and turn the generator back on. It doesn't really want to go. Not really. But Chili's like, for God's sake, just get down there. So he said he does. Now, <laughs> while he's doing that, Shelley turns she, up. Shelley turns up with his throat slit. She's just like, yeah, whatever. And she says, casual. "Nice makeup job, Shelley." Chili doesn't buy it. No. And Jason puts uh, Chuck onto the fuse box. He pushes him onto it and fries him. And then Ch- while that's happening, Chili realizes she thinks the lights are coming back on. She thinks he's done it. Yeah, the lights have come back on. But that's just the sort of the power outage of him frying in the cellar. It's quite cool. Quite like that. That's, that's your lover dying. <laughs> yeah, she even says, what's that funny smell? She even says that. that that's the uh, odor led boyfriend. That's your mate, your boyfriend frying. Um, she then realizes that Shelley is actually dead. Uh, and just as she realizes that, she gets a red hot poker rammed through her chest and out the other side. Yeah. Oof. Chrissy and Rick finally get Did, back to the camp. The thing was, though, she was running from Jason, right? She's oh, I'm running from Jason, this big fucking dude, he's going to kill me. Ah, I'm running along her. And she gets to the front door, and the front door, the wind blows open. That is more terrifying to her, some wind, than Jason. She turns to decide, now, fuck it, I'm going to face Jason instead of this windy door. It seems windy a, door. It seems a crazy decision. <laughs> It seems a crazy decision. <laughs> I love the way you say things sometimes. I oh, know. Um, yes, they arrive back. Uh, the, they smell burning. The lights aren't working. Um, Rick heads outside to see if he can figure out what's going on. Um, but but there's a great shot where Chrissy goes, Rick, Rick. And Rick's right next to her, just around the corner. But he can't talk because Jason's got his hand, massive hand over his mouth, and he's holding him still, and he's struggling. It's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's again like another thing. Was that uh, that really good point we said? Is someone in this room? That's from that last movie, wasn't it? Part two. This this, this this is a bit like that. If you try and put together, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit more human. That's why I think. And it's funny though, him though, you expect him to do better than that. He seems a bit more rough and ready. But again, it's the exact same formula. It gets to the end of the second, or the third act of the movie, and they're just going back to the cabin and they're looking around and no one's there, da, 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 and then it's Jason. It's exactly the same as the last one. But that's fine. I'm not. Well, well Rick, yeah. when she goes back inside, Rick then dies because Jason squishes his head and his eyeball pops out right into the camera 3D. Yeah. That's a pretty cool kill. I do like it when Jason just crushes people's heads. Um, so, she what's happened looking, next? She goes looking for a friend. She, she does. And, uh, Finds a bathtub full of bloody clothes. And I mean, lots of blood all over the clothes. Yeah, really bloody clothes. Um, she finds a body in a tree. So yeah. Jason's doing his decorating. Just, the biker body just falls out uh, at a very apt time. And this is where the score really is. And I said this earlier, but it really is John Williams' Jules score meets Psycho. It's it's a good mix of them both. Um, and you, you look, if you go back and listen to it, particularly in this this one, part three, it, it's a great mix of those two. Rick's body gets thrown uh, through a window. Before she does that, <clears throat> you could just say it's trauma, but it's quite amusing. <clears throat> Excuse me. She's she's trying to freaking out a little bit in the room, and she's oh covering up stuff. She basically puts a lamp, just a single lamp, in front of a window <laughs> to cover the window. It's like you could say it's trauma, and she's just freaking out, but that's not going to do shit. No, <clears throat> lose my voice. And then um, Jason throws Rick's body through the window. And she goes, uh, "Help me, Rick!" And then Rick comes flying through the window. Hilarious. Excellent. She runs upstairs. Jason climbs in, so she runs upstairs. She hides, uh, but there's another body that makes her scream um, in the cupboard. So he hears that. Uh, she has to pull. This is an, another brilliant bit. She has to pull the knife out of her dead friend. Yeah, she, uses the she doesn't really like it, which is understandable. And it, she acts it well. She acts it really well. Um, she pulls the body out of her friend, and she does manage to stab him in the hand. 
she attacks him a little bit she breaks a window she climbs out he grabs her and she's sort of hanging there and then she, she falls she, she does she does early on in the sort of the fight after jason's coming through the window she throws <clears throat> pulls down like a whole bookcase on him and all his books come yeah. down and it's a, such a shame again she could have been here like school's in jason or you know lesson time or you know <laughs> i don't know uh you should judge this book by a cover <laughs> there uh, yeah. Or, or never judge a book by its cover, which would make sense because she's, yeah. you know, yeah. Um, Time to learn. Oh, I don't know. Jesus. So uh, she she puts up a good fight. She falls, then she sma- he jumps, comes down, and she smashes his head in with a log. Yeah, she, basically, like I said, they haven't figured out a Friday phone formula. Jason's ass is getting kicked again. She rams him with a truck. Um, the, but then the truck gets stuck on a bridge. Yep. So there's becomes a foot chase again into a barn. It's the same. She, it is the same again. But yeah, she hides up on a beam. Yeah. She jumps down and does a wrestling move on him, lands on him. <laughs> yep. Um, and then she he attacks her with a machete, but she grabs a shovel. She knocks him out. Then she hangs him. She climbs down, she opens she, the barn she doors. She literally manages to get a noose around Jason, this massive guy's neck, push him out and hang him. It's like, my God. But he manages to get away, and she still manages to go ahead and try and kill him later on as well. And, and, and he gets away. Well, the way he gets out of the noose right in front of her is he slides it off of his neck, which takes his mask off, so she gets to see his horrible face underneath. It's a lot. This movie has a lot of, of uh, maskless and actual showing face Jason out of any of the other Friday 13th. Yeah, for a long period of time as well. Yeah. Um, but Ali is still alive, and um, he gets his hand hacked off, and uh, Chrissy grabs an axe, and boom, she chops into jason's head but he still keeps coming i I know my notes i just don't know where i am because it was all just like hide and seek of jason run hide run jason gets hit jason almost dies jason gets away run hide you know jason seems to drop down dead now he's got an axe in his head so she gets into a boat and she waits till morning oh okay i'll I'll need to get to where you're okay she wakes up and she spots um Jason in the window. This is quite a scary moment, actually. She sees him without his mask, and he sees her, and he comes storming out is of the it, house. Is this the van? Have they got to the van yet? Yeah, we're past all of that. Oh, okay. Um, we're at the very end now, where we don't know if it's a dream or not, because he comes after her, and then she screams, and then she opens her eyes, and he's no longer there anymore. And she's still in the boat. And then Mrs. Voorhees comes out of the water instead of Jason. I, uh, yeah. And cut. it's so weird because she, she, yeah, she wakes up and looks up at, the, at this house at the window. There's just Jason. All of a sudden, Jason's just running towards her. They're all it's saying, really oh, scary. It's not Jason. Okay, fine. Because we're all expecting her and her, like, for the 13th part one. We're expecting the hand to come up. Blah, blah, blah. So then it's like, Jason, okay. Oh, that's not the scare. Okay. Now it's her, it, Jason's mum. Is now coming out of the water. So I was like, okay. I can't, she gets, I can't she gets taken off. Now, I'm confused about the ending here. I don't know if the cops think that she killed everybody at the camp. Yeah, that's what it's implying, that she's Looney Tunes. Yeah, okay, and then there's this great crane I shot. I think. I don't know. That's, that's my take. But I, I've never noticed this brilliant crane shot at the end that sort of pans all the way over to the barn and then dips down into the barn onto Jason's body. And he sort of just lies there and then ends. I think he might twitch a bit, I'm not sure, but it's a great crane shot to end it. And that's the end, really. We don't really... I guess they didn't know if they were going to make any more. You know, is this one going to do any good? We'll have to end it here. Well, it's a weird ending, because uh, she's just taken away by police, but there's no more police there, like, taping up the house and stuff. Like, uh, surely you need to be sorting this whole thing out. This is a crime scene. Like, I don't... It doesn't really tell you what... It's going on at the end there. It's, it's not shown, explained. That's what I say. I'm confused as to even whether the police thought she did it or whether... It feels rushed, you know. I mean, it was made a year after the bomb before. I know, so I know. Probably was a bit rushed. It would have but, been, a, the, for their studio, been their full-time job just Friday 13th movies. So it's time, but you, not, time you finish one, you start the next one. 
for what it is obviously you know my thoughts on this guys and gav it's a thumbs up from me for what it is it's it's a fun silly ride it's not even an hour and a half long it you know if you don't watch the credits it just ends it's less than an hour and a half it's fun it recaps the the one before it you can skip that a bit if you want and then it's got some fairly good kills it's very bloodless apart from the last sort of 30 minutes which for some reason they ramp up the blood in the kills and here's a boob and some good kills yeah but it's still you know you can see where this formula is being built and made and it's really interesting what i love is the the um historical sort of aspects of where this was in cinema where where they thought 3d cinema was really going to be a thing and you know we still think that now in some ways it's just it's just fun 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 not quite to the level of part two for me but um no no, i agree still fun silly and these these movies aren't to be taken seriously and i think if you and i which we've done we've watched this one you know if you if you and i or a group of friends sat down and put on any jason movie particularly the early ones you'd have a laugh you'd <coughs> sit around eating pizza <coughs> drinking you can, and talking over it exactly that you can talk over it that's that's the thing which is good for these movies because it's like yeah whatever but um at the moment they are still rated as as they go uh for me one two and three fair enough fair enough it's two one three for me but um wow yeah yeah I, I, don't get me wrong one is incredible but um two's but better than one. i i prefer to watch two wow okay it's like rocky two i yeah, prefer rocky it might two be a nostalgia thing rocky two is better because it's just a better remake of rocky one but i'm looking forward to next uh i don't really remember any of the rocky films i'm looking forward to next year uh doing uh four and five actually four is um both the final Corey's, chapter both of them are Corey Feldman. i like i like that number four is called the final chapter yeah i i love the fact that they kept teasing us that it's gonna end yeah yeah i'm looking forward to the Corey ones that'll be next year but it's yeah a way uh, to get people in the cinema though this is the last one you gotta watch it okay i'm guessing you you give this a thumbs up despite I, 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 yeah, well, if you're a Friday the 13th fan, then obviously, because you have to watch all of them. If you're a horror fan, um, uh, yes and no. If you're Sarah, no. Um, but uh, she's not a fan of slashers. So if you're yeah, not a fan of slashers, say, though, probably not. If you're a fan of slashers, you would have seen this, because it's got a couple and, of yeah, very if good you're a fan kills of slashers, in it. you would have seen it. So, you know. But if you haven't, then, and you like horror movies and you want something like that, yeah, yeah you can do. It's got some fun stuff in it. Um, you know, turn your brain but either, it, You know, either way, if you're looking for a fun double bill, these two films will make a fun double bill with a few beers and some <laughs> buddies. Uh, yeah, um, I'd probably choose like another series with this, I think, or a totally different slasher film, maybe, but. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. But that that was Jason 2 and 3. Absolutely loved talking about those with you. Right, should we uh, get out of here, I suppose? Let, let's go take a break and come back and uh, wrap things up. Ch- 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 kill. Back again with the Renegade Master. Big Boy Challenger. Power to the people. Right. The ice is going to break. We, we've we done it, Gav. We've covered Jason 2 and 3, Friday the 13th, 2 and 3D. Um, in fact, that's our second 3D film we've covered now. We've covered um, Jules 3D and, and Friday the 13th 3D. Maybe one day we'll cover Halloween um, Amateurville 3D. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, we, maybe not. Yeah, we could do some Amityville films. I wouldn't mind doing Amityville 1, at least. Um, but I, we'll... I, to be honest, we could just do the series. I know some of them are shit, but... Um... Well, there's about 50 of them these days, because there's Amityville Karen, no, there's but... Amityville in space. No, 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 because we wouldn't do that. We'd have a point where we stop, you know. That I don't stop, you know me. Don't stop till you get enough. Don't stop believing. Michael Jackson. Really Don't stop till you get enough. Now, um, well, yes. So that was a great episode, episode 138. Thank you, everybody, for um, for that. And we do hope, Gav does hope, that you are all wearing your tiny little lycra thongs, sweating your private areas. in the summer heat um, while you listen to this episode. Um, just to report back from the camping trip, with Bill Murray everything went fine he was actually very 
uh, polite and nice in the tent. There was a lot, a lot of room in the tent, and um, it all went very well. Uh, yeah, so you know, nothing to report there. <laughs> it was fine. There was a bit of dew in the morning on the old uh, tent. It's got a little bit wet. And, um, <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> Only on your side. It was weird. But, uh, <laughs> I don't know why. There's a lot more movement on my side. Yeah, on your back. I do a lot of movement in my sleep. Well, it, when yeah. I'm trying to get to sleep, I'm terrible. I know. Um, well, that was episode 138. Lots of fun. But let's talk about what's coming up next. Gav, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you strapped in? Strapped. This is like the trailers now for a movie. So episode 139 is next, and that is a patron pick. pick Yay! Pick, pick. And that is Holly. Holly, you have chosen... Thank you, lovely patron Holly. Yes, you've chosen Razorblade Smile from 1998. My DVD will be arriving in a couple of days for that. The, the, the name is sounds amazing. It should, awesome. be a, it should be an 80s electronic band. And also we'll be covering tw- 2016's Cell, C-E-L-L, with John Cusack and Samuel motherfucking Jackson. And I've never seen that, so two movies I've never seen. Great stuff. And I but- apologise if I don't like them well you know and there so that's 139 episode 140 we will be trying to cheat death because we're going to be looking at final destination one and two possibly the best in the franchise that's cool we we may do the others at some point but one and two are the ones worth talking about i think um especially because lately Anytime I go on a road trip or drive, we always <laughs> see the logger lorry. and I always, Everyone sees the logger lorry. Everyone posts it up and goes, oh my God, guys, I'm behind this. You and just, everyone's like, go in the next it, lane, go in the next so lane. So many people, I'm on a lot of, like, on Facebook, I, I'm really, I mean, my feed really is just horror groups and stuff really. Um, and so often, so often people it's like just every put couple a months, picture like, up, just up. that, and everyone knows it. Is it, and that's great that uh, Final Destination just, 2 can do that put that one picture and everybody knows what's going on it's so good it's so yeah, good yeah. Um, so that's what we're doing for episode 140 right. and then that means I can let everybody know that episode 141 has been, will be coming towards the end of the summer we'll be looking at two very sort of gritty dirty New York set 80s movies dirty gritty New York sex one of those is the cannibalistic humanoid underground dweller himself chud from 1984 yeah which is funny because uh, sarah and i i think i talked to her on the podcast and i uh, gave it a go i was like i've never seen it i think she's hadn't seen it yeah we both hadn't seen it before and then we got to the end of it and it was the copy on amazon prime it i think i mentioned it oh yeah it was all it speeded always, up no and then it went slowed down and it's just like what the fuck is going on <laughs> so i don't the end's just like completely like i, I don't know what's going on so uh, well, it'll be interesting to see the ending we're pairing chud up with um Basket Case from 1982. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've seen that. I've seen Basket Case 1, 2, and 3, actually. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the Basket Case series, actually, so it'll be fun to talk about the first one, especially. I can't remember them. Uh, uh, so, yeah, that'll be a fun, weird, sort of gruesome, deformed episode. New York episode. Deformed, deformed things in New York. And uh, a segue to the High Strangers podcast, uh, Pimp, the, the next episode we're doing. We're going to New York to talk about the uh, the gangs, the Son of Sam, the uh, the rats, uh, the, the lights out, stuff like that. Nice one. Well, I can segue from Razorblade Smile, which we're covering in the next episode, because uh, I'm pleased to announce that um, the other show that I do, Blame It on the Aliens podcast with RJ McCready. We will soon be recording our episode. We've been on hiatus now but for a few months, but we'll be coming back with an episode looking at the origins of real-life vampires. You know, oh, these, nice. these mass graves that they dig up, you know, in these yeah. Eastern European towns. And they've got coins over the eyes and stakes oh, yeah. and that. So we'll be looking at all that kind of stuff. So, yes, it's good, good that we both do other shows and fun that we do that as well. You'll find that it's most of it's just going to be superstitious you know look stevie wonder once said very superstitious ah, writings on the wall i guess so but he also said i just called to say i love you so can True. you trust him well yes <laughs> well i'll cool. come to it get your knickers down
Oh, thought you were going to do your Michael King. Oh, he no, ch- there. Ch- he broke there, I thought. Jason, behind you. Right, well, let me do some uh, admin. Okay. And then we can say our goodbyes. So, thanks, everybody, for Thank tuning you. in and listening. As always, we are the podcast on Haunted Hill. We are a proud member of Legion Podcast Network. Uh, you can contact us on the podcast on Haunted Hill at outlook.com. That's where you can drop us an email. Um, we're also contactable on Facebook. Um, just go to the podcast on Haunted Hill. It's where we're most active, uh, and it's a lot of fun on our Facebook page. Um, whether you pop it, pop along once a month or whether you update things daily like me, um, you can tell us what you're watching, what you're looking forward to, anything movie or just horror-related. It's brilliant on there, and it's like a real family. It's been going almost 10 years, and we welcome more people all the time. Um, also, uh, the Legion podcasts have their own facebook page so please go there and they have a website legionpodcast.com that's where you can access our show and all the other shows that are within the network uh, again if you're into horror or sci-fi or just anything really related to films please go to legion podcast it's fantastic they have a patron we have a patron which i'll come to in a moment as well um, wherever you're listening to us now is where you can continue to listen to us but we're on spotify youtube Podknife, apple and millions of other places not millions that's mental hundreds maybe <clears throat> we're on Twitter. Jack, what the fuck? We're on Twitter <laughs> at Haunted Podcast. Uh, we're on Instagram, the podcast on Haunted Hill Insta. Hasn't Twitter changed its name? Twitter, it uh, I, I, uh, I'm not on Twitter anymore. Oh. Well, uh, well, I downloaded the app and um, uh, oh, sorry, Dana, I deleted the app. Um, I couldn't really be bothered. Then at uh, one point, I thought. Oh, actually, I was just going to quickly check something. I think I went back on to download it again. And I don't know what my password is, so give it uh, fuck it. <laughs> oh, dear. So, I well, don't know. I, I, Elon Musk, when he took over, he was like, there's going to be no more bots and stuff, all that. And at that period, I just got loads of bots following me every day. And I was just like, what? This is completely opposite of what you said. On and Instagram. It all, it all just went weird. It all just went kind of boring and stuff. And I was a bit like, so, I'm getting, every two or three days, I get a girl... A different girl every two or three days add me on Instagram, but they're not real girls. Yeah, of course not. No, I. Uh, uh, oh no, I do. Yeah, cli- no, I if do. you click on them, there's no profile available. You've got to sign you up. You have to, to them. follow them. And I'm like, what are you on about? Like, I don't. You're not real. Goodbye. Yeah, I do get them as well. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to mention is we talked about Star Wars Sanctuary Moon, our short film. That is part of our Deadbolt um, Deadbolt Films production. Uh, and we're a little production company. Deadboltfilms.com is our website. We do, we've do we done shorts. We're doing a short film. It's still being worked on, as we said. Mm-hmm. We've done features, comics, podcast, obviously. And you can find out more about that on deadboltfilms.com. Yep. Uh, we have a YouTube channel, which is going to be getting a bit of a... A facelift, isn't it? Yeah, I took off a lot of content, um, and it's only sort of more the solid stuff, the short films and things at the moment. Um, and I need to make some little thumbnail pictures for the more and stuff like that. Um, Go to their bolt films, check that out on YouTube. But yeah, if you subscribe though, if you aren't, it helps us actually. If you could just go to YouTube, uh, their bolt films, uh, just type that in your search engine, go to subscribe, and then you will see when it, the uh, the premiere build up. For Sanctuary Moon's coming out. If if you're into Star Wars and horror movies, and if you want to see a Star Wars horror movie, uh, I think you'll be happy. Yeah, I think you will. I certainly am. Um, Twitter at Deadbolt Films and Instagram is just Deadbolt Films. And finally, and um, no, by no means least, Patron. Yes, um, we, honestly, we never ask we anybody can't. to do it. No, we, 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 of course we could do it without you guys. That's, 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 and we I'm would. I'm not saying you know. that. Um, but, um, uh, we, we love it so much. It's, um, it's, it's means the world to us. It, it happens. I know I'm a, quite a silent partner and all this sort of stuff and saying this stuff, but honestly, it does, you know, I may, I, I say it with, with all the content we try and give you, we try and, you know, make it special for you guys. But thank you so much. Yeah, because, you know, like you could say, Gav, we would always do this anyway, yeah, and we did yeah, do for years. Did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but um, the fact that we... It just get makes some, it so some, nice. Yeah, and it's helpful, because we've, we've had to buy pieces of equipment recently, and sometimes you can't find the movie that you want to review, and we can use the money that we get from our patrons to do that kind of thing. So thank you ever so much and for our patrons. And it, uh, it gives... Um, when you're going to do the episode, it's nice knowing that <laughs> someone is actually listening... 
Uh, um, so and you like it that much that you would do that. So um, it makes you want to give more entertaining uh, uh, entertainment for you. Entertaining entertainment. Yes. Entertaining entertainment, maybe. Yes. Yeah. Uh, obviously, go to Patreon and search for the podcast on Into Deal. And if you can't find the link, you can message me. You can email us. Message me on Facebook. I'll find you the link. It's all easy peasy stuff. Um, you can donate as little as a pound or a dollar a month. But you don't need to do that. But if you want to, it does honestly help. Like I said, it, it helps with the cost of a few little things here and there. And it really just helps to keep the show ticking over nicely and makes it a little bit easier for us. Um, if you do sign up and become a patron, there are some benefits. You will get a T-shirt in one of three colors in your size, whatever size you decide. Uh, you'll also get to pick... Uh, the two films we review when it comes around to your turn. So every three episodes is a patron pick, much like next episode, Holly has picked those two movies. And then we'll do two normal episodes where we talk about our own sort of movies that we've got on our list. And then it'll be another patron pick. So you'll get to pick that. Um, you also get access to the entire back catalogue of shows where you've done 138. Oh, watch your back catalogue. We've done 138 episodes plus about half a dozen bonus episodes and music episodes so you'll have access to all of that video. there's videos video there's ones. bonus episodes which we don't do as much as we'd like but there is some stuff out there um and yeah it's just it, there are some benefits to being a patron but i'm not going to hear to sell it to you and to you. and we do you know i try and <clears throat> make little videos uh and do a little uh podcast when i can as well um and dan does as well when he can um you haven't for a little while no, I haven't. I'm no. sorry. I've got two two-year-olds and they're That's eating up fine. all my life. I do, try, I do try to do the odd thing here and there. I uh, try to do the video ones and you can only see them literally if you're patron. So yeah. I'll, I'll try and do one in my thong. Maybe the patrons are like that. Not sure. Not sure, Gav. <laughs> I, I, I don't have a thong and I don't think the patrons would appreciate it. The other thing is if you're a patron, then I will be reading out all of your names now in a silly voice which some of you have said that you like so thank you each and every one of you but thank you guys don call thank you to Matthew godly <laughs> matthew godly okay okay thank you to tana jenkins what tana jenkins oh, okay yeah okay sorry i have to keep Getting the toys, my brain can't take it. Go on. Thank you to Kevin S. Fife. Okay, got that. Thank you to Sarah K. <laughs> got that one? Yeah. Thank you to Rachel. <laughs> Thank you to RJ McGreedy. Oh, he got the robot, did he? Yeah, you got little robot moves there. And thank you to Lex Boo. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, guys, uh, thank you so, so, so much. Thank you, guys. Lex Boo, that is Holly. And Holly, yep. you are and you're next. next. Well, you pick, are so next, girl. So can't thank wait you. to do that. And uh, other, uh, you lovely other patrons um, do obviously get that thinking cap on uh, for the movies. I know, I still know that Rachel would like to actually do it in person with us. The podcast, you mean? Yes. The, the, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Thank goodness. <laughs> um, on the show, her picks, which would be really interesting. So, um, you know, if that can be done, well, we'll do I that. do. I do believe that it is only Rachel and Sarah um, that haven't done it yet. Had, okay. Uh, yeah, until, so, it, until it goes round again. Yeah. And I, I know that a couple of our patrons have already, have already got, got their lined second up, haven't picks. they? And, yeah. and I know of a couple of the films, and it's yeah, just like, oh yeah. wow, okay. Yeah. yeah. 